this is a nice Friday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Like, the sun is going down. Nice weather out here. You feel me? It's not too hot, not too cold for the young and for the old. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here. 607-753-4819 is a request line. Once again, 607-753-4819 is the request line that you, my peoples, are going to call to get into this show. Let me know how you feel about the various topics that we are going to discuss on this show. We got a lot, ladies and gentlemen. We got some predictions to make. We got some reactions, sports reactions, boxing predictions. Um, and for the, for the last hour of the show, we do got a new incorporated pop culture segment of the show where we're going to be talking all things pop culture. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot. And guess what? I'm just ready to get this show on the road. to get on Kirk Cousins. It's time. Well, anyway, we got a nice welterweight battle this Saturday on pay-per-view. Errol Spence Jr. versus Sean Porter. Ladies and gentlemen, I I'm ready for this fight. You know, you know, being a boxing fan, being in this era of the welterweight division, you got a lot to be proud of. You know, and guys like Spence and Porter, you know, these guys, they fight each other. They're not scared to fight whoever. Obviously, Sean Porter has the resume. I do believe that this brother do have a better, you know, he had a better quality of opponents, you could say. He fought Garcia. He fought Thurman. All those fights were close fights. That could have went either way, I would say. But, ladies and gentlemen, oh, my God. It don't get no better than this. It don't get no better than this. Now, I know a lot of people who was counting out Sean Porter. And I know Errol Spence is the favorite, as he should be, as he should be. You know what I'm saying? This guy, you know, he, he's strong, he's big, and guess what? His IQ, he showed his ring IQ when he fought Mikey Garcia, right? But he claims, the brother claims that he is going to knock out Sean Porter, and honestly, I don't know if he will, because he couldn't knock out Mikey Garcia, who moved way up, right? Mad different weight classes to fight this brother. Yeah, he dominated that fight. But he didn't get the knockout. So I don't believe that he will get the knockout in this fight. I believe that it's going to be a close fight. And the only way it's going to be a close fight is if is Porter, Sean Porter, go back to his style of boxing. Right? Not that pretty type of boxing that he tried to display when everybody criticized his boxing skills. When he fought you guys, he tried to act all pretty and cute like he was in a beauty pageant. That ain't going to work in this fight against Edward Spence Jr. Right? He barely won that fight. A lot of people thought he lost to you guys. I said he won, but a very, very, extremely close fight that could have went either way. So I don't want to see him try to act like this is a beauty pageant. Fight your style. Yes, your style of fighting is ugly because it's the non-traditional boxing style. But if it works for you, it works for you. And guess what? You got to do what works for you in order for it to work for you, ladies and gentlemen. So this brother right here, Sean Porter, don't get too cute. Just go in there and, and play your style of boxing, right? And I believe if he does that, it's going to be a close fight. Because Porter, he will be in your face the whole entire fight. He's going to be there. He's not going to be ducking, all right? A little less counter punching, but he's going to be 
in your face. He's going to be buzzing like a bee, but throwing jabs. You, you know those bees that those bees that you see when it's hot outside and they just buzzing? That, that's, that's exactly how Sean Porter fight. He's like a buzzing bee in your face. Get out of my face, please. That's basically what this brother is. He's a buzzing bee that knows how to throw jabs. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait for this fight, right? And I do believe that Porter is not to be, you know, you shouldn't just say, oh, it's going to be a blow. I just brother had three months of training before the fight even was announced. The brother already knew he was going to fight Spence even before the fight got made. So his father, who I believe is a key reason why this is going to be a little bit competitive more than people would think, it's because his father always has his son prepared, right? We see it sometimes in boxing with the, the father and the son. If your father is your trainer, a lot of stuff don't go right. And, you know, things seem, seem to fold, right? But in this case, um, Kenny Porter, he's a, he's a, he's a, he knows what to do. He got in there. He made sure his son was preparating early for the fight. And, and, and that's what I can say. He had three months of extra training um, prior to the fight. Before the fight was even made, should I say. So, you know, my dad told me that he, he watched a video on, on TV where Porter had training camp. And in that training camp, his father was in his ear screaming, Get up! Get up! Jab! Jab! And I honestly think that right there is preparation that's needed. Like, yo, Sean Porter, you're not going against a no-name brother right now. You're going up against Errol Spence Jr., the best Heavyweight, arguably, a lot of people say Terrence Crawford is either way, flip a coin, heads or tails. What do you prevail? It's, 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 it's either way. So, I do believe that his father is getting him ready for this fight, right? We look at Evan Spence, his last fight against Mikey Garcia. Like I said, displayed his strengths. A lot of people, a lot of people in this world like to find niches. Like, you know, like little, little things that they can criticize in you, right? Like, all right, he's good, but he needs to do this or he doesn't do that. A lot of people like to do that. A lot of people did that about did that to Errol Spence. And he showed them, like, listen, I'm a boxer. I'm a traditional. I, I know how to box. All right? So, look, look, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we are in for a competitive fight. I do believe that Porter is going to be in there and he's going to bring the pressure to Errol Spence. Errol Spence can say, um, you know, this and that. Like, you know, Spence has been, you know, Spence... He has been very, very... It's been a lot of smack talking in this fight, should I say, right? It's a lot of smack talk. Spence recently said that, he, you know, Sean Porter fights like he's drowning. Like he don't know how to swim, which I find that to be hilarious. That is funny. That, I'm not even going to lie. That is funny. Spence often call him a dirty fighter. And it's been a lot of chit-chat. But ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. The rain was earlier today. Um, both fighters made 147. Uh, Spence looked very comfortable. Spence, when I saw Spence at the rain today, the brother looked very, very comfortable. He didn't look like he was worried. He looked like he was ready. He was all about business. So we'll see, you know, what his business entails this Saturday. But ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a fight. We are in for a treat. I believe, like I said, it's going to be competitive early. Sean Porter is going to come in there and give Spence, you know, a hard time adjusting to his non-traditional fighting style. But later on in the fight, I believe that Ellis Spence will start to break down Sean Porter. And though I don't believe it's going to be a knockout, I'm going to give the edge um, to, um, to Spence, Errol Spence. I'm going to give this, the, the edge to Errol Spence to win a unanimous decision. And like I said, it's going to be close. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to the show, whoever you are, um, just call up this request line. Let me know how you feel about this fight, who you think is going to win. Ellis Spence or Sean Porter, 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. And we're going to come back from a very, very quick commercial break. And when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, I got some Thursday Night Football reactions. I got a lot to say about the Philadelphia Eagles. And I got more to say, you know? You know like how NWA say I got a lot to say, ladies and gentlemen? Tune in to The Real Little Show. And I got a lot to say, a lot to say tonight on this beautiful, beautiful Friday afternoon. Don't go nowhere, ladies and gentlemen. We just getting started. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the real of the show, and it's time to get into the next topic that we have on the agenda. So, yesterday was Thursday Night Football, and I got a lot to say about that, right? But before I do, remember, the request line is 607-753-4819. Once again, 
4819. But I got a lot to say about this game. And this game right here is a type of game that the Eagles needed to have to prove to people that they can contend for a Super Bowl. This was a game right here. You're one and two. Teams that be one and three generally do not make the Super Bowl. So, or even the playoffs at that. So, you had to come on the road in a tough environment against a 3-0 Packers team to be able to win and, and pull the people, right? Because I picked the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl. And there was a reason why I picked the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl. Not because I was crazy, not because I was drunk, but because I do believe that the Eagles had the weapons to do so. You know, Carson Wentz, he had that good year when he had his MVP, MVP um, even though he came one up. You know, he looked good that year. And then you add receivers like Deshaun Jackson, d -Jacks, that can burn the um, defenders. And you have Elshon Jeffrey. Then you have Nelson Aguilar. But ladies and gentlemen, all that was before injury, right? I can never predict injuries, right? So injuries took place. d -Jacks has been hurt. Alshon Jeffrey was hurt, but he came back in the game. And that was pivotal for the Eagles because on key, in key third downs, he was able to catch the ball and move down the field. So he had over on the game, he had um, a couple touchdowns, right? He had like three he had three catches, a touchdown, and a, and a couple of third down conversions. So going back to the Eagles, the Eagles very well could be undefeated. They lost a close game against the Atlanta Falcons. They lost a close close game um, last week, in, as well. In all those games, they could have won if it wasn't for a drop, right? If it wasn't for another drop. They could be undefeated. So to be honest with you, I never really thought that this team was a bad team. But I was worried because going on the road on a Thursday night football game is not easy. It's not easy at all, especially when you don't have the extra days of practice and you got to travel and you just had a game on Sunday and you have a game on Thursday. But they came out and they played good. They was able to run the ball effectively. Jordan Howard, 15 carries, 87 yards. Miles Sanders, 11 carries, 72 yards. A combined 159 yards rushing the football. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to win you the game a lot of times, right? When Carson Wentz don't even got to do too much. He didn't even have to do too much. He handed to the running back, and he absolutely obliterated the Packers' defense. But Carson Wentz was like, hello, I am a, a former, former MVP candidate, so I am going to chip in. 16 to 27, 160 yards, and three touchdowns. That was very good. Interesting, right? So, like I said, the Eagles, to me, I'm not taking back my pick. I know we in 2019, and we about to be in 2020, and our emotions go crazy. When something happened, it's the best thing or the craziest thing we ever saw. I'm not going to, you know, say we was one and two, or now we two, or not, we two and two. The Eagles are two and two. I don't want to make it seem like that's my team, because I'm not an Eagles fan. Right? So they 2-2. Two and two, And I still do believe that that, that, that that team right there is my favorite to come out the NFC to play New England in the Super Bowl. Right? They 2-2. Two and two, They do have a, a, a hard schedule. I'm not even going to lie. They got a hard schedule. The schedule makers didn't like these cats. But, you know, 2-2. Two and two, And they have a winnable game next week. I forgot what that game is, to be honest with you. But... It's going to be a good game. And it's going to be a game for them to win. Because I do believe, matter of fact, let's put up their schedule right now. Let's put up the Eagles' schedule right now. The next game that the Eagles are going to be playing is the Jets. Don't even get me started with these daggone Jets. All right? With this daggone mess. All right? We already know what's going on with the Jets. They're 0-3. And they're going to lose on the road to the Eagles. So that's a win. They'll be above 500. But we'll see. But... Going to the Packers side of things. I know my co-host, Kenny C, man, in the huddle, Monday nights, 8 to 10. I know his heart is heartbroken. I know you heartbroken, Kenny C. Kenny C, if you listening, I know you heartbroken because he is a Packers fan. And you should be. You should be. Because the Packers are god-awful in the red zone. They are. In the red zone, they are 3 for, for 7. 3 for 7. Right, so they had a drive where it was like nine minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, and they drove all the way down the field and was stopped at, on fourth and goal. Right, it was fourth and goal and they got stopped. Then, a couple, you know, on the final drive, they drove down the field again and wasn't able to put the ball in the end zone. 
Aaron Rodgers, yes, the brother have a decent. He had a decent game. They just couldn't run the ball. They just couldn't run the ball. And you're not going to win many games. And I know Aaron Rodgers is great. I didn't forget this brother greatness. But you're not going to win games when you cannot run the football. You have to be able to be well balanced. Right? You're not going to win many games. So, even though Aaron Rodgers was decent, you know, he did throw for 422 yards. Did have, did, was 34 or 53. Did throw that in interception, but it wasn't his fault. It's basically a bang bang play. The, the defender got there in time, and you know it was just a good defensive play. But Devon, Devontae Adams to me is the key here. He torched Philly throughout the game. He did, putting up 180 yards. 180 yards, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the brother was on a mission. The brother was on a mission, and they they connected early in the in the, in, the, in the first quarter when. Aaron Rodgers threw that deep ball on the sideline, and they, they connected early. But when he went down with a toe injury, which I believe it was, the, that, that was one of the reasons why they struggled in the red zone. That was one of the reasons. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're the Packers, Kenny C, I'm talking to you, brother. Don't be worried. You're 3-1. I know there's a lot of talk about the offensive struggles, but, you know, to the most part, they're winning games. And that's what matters, right? It doesn't matter how you win it. Just win it. Honestly, it doesn't matter how. Just win it. If your defense is playing good, well, Rodgers, all you got to do is make a couple good plays, which we know you're capable of. Right? Sometimes it's good to win with your defense. You don't got to put up 40 points a game. You got to put up 30 points a game. You don't got to be Pat Mahomes. Just win the game. Right? Obviously, they lost to the Eagles, but I do believe that they're going to be in that NFC picture. So we'll see. Once again, 607-753-4819 is request line. Once again, 607-753-4819 is request line. And when we come back from a very, very short um, break, I'm going to play a song. And we're going to get back into some more topics. I got, like I said, I got a lot to say today. It's Friday. It's a nice day. It's 6.26 p.m. approximately. I got a lot to say. Don't go nowhere. Oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen. Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls need to come back. He is the GOAT. Biggie Smalls is the GOAT. Ladies and gentlemen, Biggie Smalls is the GOAT. He's one of the GOATs at least, man. Classic, classic tunes right there. We are back on the Real Little Show. And the request line is 607-753-4819. I'm going to start taking calls in a few minutes. 607-753-4819. And it's time to get back to what's on my mind. Like I said, this is the show where I got a lot of stuff on my mind. And I got a lot to say. And I'm going to say it right now. So the NBA... Had a list, right? ESPN dropped the list of the top players in the NBA, right? I'm not going to go through the whole list. I'm just going to go through the, through the top 10. And as I do, I, I have a lot to say about that. And starting with Clay Thompson, right? Clay Thompson. Why was this brother ranked number 49? Who was... Somebody need to explain that to me. Somebody need to explain that to me. Why is Clay Thompson ranked at number 49? This guy's legit, legit, legitimately a top five two-way player, right? And when you're a top five two-way player, your value automatically got to put you at least in the top 20. Like, he should at least, at worst, been in the top 20. And they got him at number 49. All right, I seen cats like De'Aaron Fox and, and all the, and not to, you know, really single out people, even though I just called the brother name. I don't mean to do that to the brother. But come on. Really, if you're an NBA fan, Clay Thompson is ranked number 49? Nah, 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 nah. I'm not buying it and I'm not selling it either. He should be at least in the top 20s. Now, if he was on my list, he would be in that range from 16 to 20, to be honest with you. At, at you know, that's where he should be, right? I mean, come on. Literally, the guy, he's a star. If, it's, if Stephen Curry wasn't there... Right? He gets a lot of, you know, he doesn't get the, the biggest attention because Stephen Curry is the best shooter in the world. Right? He's there. At the time, Kevin Durant was there. So the brother had to take a back seat like he was a baby in a, in a back seat. Literally. So I know he don't get the, the proper recognition that he deserves. Right? And that's what happens when you sacrifice. When you sacrifice, you really do sacrifice. Right? And that's exactly what Clay Thompson has done. But you cannot tell me. On the Real Lil Show, that Clay Thompson is ranked where he's supposed to be. 
And if you think he's ranked even lower than 49, then guess what? You need to go to a doctor because there's something not clicking in your brain. The brother should be at least from 16 to 20. But to dive into the list, I'm going to read you the, the um, 10 to 1, and I'm going to tell you where they got it wrong. At number 10, they had Paul George. At number 9, Damian Dime, a.k.a. Damian Lillard. Number 8, Embiid Indeed, a.k.a. Joel Embiid. Number 7, Nikola Jokic. Number 6, Stephen Curry. Number 5, Anthony Davis. Number 4, James Harden. Number 3, LeBron James. Number 2, Kawhi Leonard. Number 1, Giannis. Now, for the most part, I'm not going to argue with this list. I think the top 10 is pretty accurate. I'm not even going to lie. You can debate Embiid and Jokic because to me they both good. But, I mean, I think they got it right. It's hard to, I mean, it's not that hard. It's 50-50 to argue Embiid over, over Jokic, but I'll take Jokic as well. I think Jokic, the big fella, the joker, the brother can shoot. And speaking of the joker, there's a joker movie coming out in a couple weeks. So it's a fitting time to bring up the joker. You feel me? But Nikola Jokic, the joker, a.k.a., right, he is a big man that can shoot the ball. He can shoot the rock. And he's like seven feet. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Something that I haven't seen in, a, in, 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 in life, honestly, right? So, like I said, 50-50, but I think they got it right over there. And B, number eight, Jokic, number seven. Number six, Stephen Curry. Five, Davis, like I said. Harden, number four, LeBron, and Kawhi, and Giannis. So, where things get iffy is when we get to the top two. I do believe LeBron James is number three. To me, that's perfect. A lot of people will probably still say that he's the best player in the world. I do believe age do account for something. Even though we're seeing, you know, a couple stars now like Tom Brady and LeBron James who are, you know, still schooling the game at a old, very old age, right? But at the same time, age do got to account for something. LeBron James is clearly, right, as good as LeBron James is. And as much as I think LeBron James is going to have an excellent MVP caliber season, He's still getting older. So I do believe LeBron James at, over there at number three is perfect. Especially even when you think about it, AD is going to be over there. LeBron James is, is you know, he's not, he's going to be in MVP conversation. Believe me, you. But you also got another top five score in AD on that same team. So, you know, Giannis, obviously, and Kawhi, this is where I think that they got it wrong. To me. Kawhi Leonard is clearly the best player in the NBA. Not because he just won a championship, but because the value of his, his play. The number one all-around two-way player in the game. He can lock your number one offensive option up, and he can, guess what, be your number one offensive option. Right? You saw when he was on the Spurs, how when he played against the Warriors... Right, that that year that he got injured and that led to him leaving, right? He that that team was up by twenty five points. The Spurs team. A lot of people forget that they were literally up like twenty five points in game one. And when Kawhi went down, not only did the Warriors win their series and the Spurs lost the series, they lost the game. They lost the game. That right there shows you Kawhi's Len Kawhi Leonard value to a team they lost that one game which it was up 25 when he was balling out and when he went down they lost that game better yet the series you get what i'm saying <coughs> but he went to the raptors a lot of people was like ah uh, they're still going to be a good team right but guess what not only did he brought them to the finals to play golden state they beat golden state and yes it was a lot of injuries but still Kawhi Leonard had an excellent excellent playoffs the best playoffs by far. You saw that 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 shot that he made when it bounced across the rim in Game Seven, S sent Joel and B crying home like a baby. Right? We saw when he went up against Giannis and how he and the, it, you know the Bucks was was up 2-0 and they won that series and what he did in the finals, carrying that Raptors team. The brother to me, everywhere he goes, he he wins. And when he go to the Clippers, you be ashamed to tell me he's not gonna win again. Kawhi Leonard is clearly not even a debate, not even a discussion. It's clearly the best player in the NBA. Giannis is number two, and that's how I see it. Yes, the brother won the MVP, and I do believe he's 
in that discussion and winning it again. Now, if I was a better man, I probably might pick him to win it again, even though that usually don't happen. I might look at it's between him and Steph Curry and LeBron and, and, and probably James Harden you could throw in there as well. So I do believe this list outside of Klay Thompson at 49 and a couple other, you know, play a couple other people in the 20s. I do believe this is an accurate list. There's not a lot of lists that come out that's accurate. There's a there's a lot of lists that comes out where you're like, what the hell is this list? But this one right here was pretty accurate other than those few errors. And like I said, Kawhi Leonard is clearly the best basketball player in the NBA. But enough with that. I got to move on because we got a jam-packed show today. Um, I got to make some predictions, right? It's week three of the NFL football season, right? Or week four, rather. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. It's week four of the NFL football season. I mean, time is flying, man. Time is flying. Sometimes, do, you know what day to, do you know what day it is? I, sometimes I don't even think I know. Time is just flying, right? So excuse me on that. Do you know what today is? Ladies and gentlemen, today is Friday. All right, week four coming up. Week four predictions we got. And I'm going to just give you my five. Five games, right? The, I'm going to call it the real little five, right? That's a good assessment. See, I'm coming up with things on the, in the middle of the show. The real little five, that's what it's going to be called. Well, I'm going to pick five games from week four coming up. And I'm going to make predictions. Like I said, I don't got time to go through every game. I'm going to just go to do these five games and tell you why I believe those picks that I pick is the right picks, right? Starting off with the Redskins and the Giants at 1 o'clock this Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, if you tune in to In The Huddle Sports Radio on Monday, I was on a show with Kenny C. and Robert, my two co-hosts, and we talked about Daniel Jones. And you know how high I am on Daniel Jones if you watch that show. The, the, the class... The professionalism, just being patient in the pocket when the world was collapsing because the offensive line couldn't stop a nosebleed in that game against the Buccaneers. It's like it's like standing in the middle of a street and there's an earthquake and you out there taking a selfie when the floor is cracking behind you. He was just that calm and collective. Like, listen, don't worry. I got this. I'm the captain now. Imagine that. Imagine you in the middle of the street. And you, and there's a big earthquake, right? World War Z, whatever they want to call it in movies, right? It's happening. And the earth is giving away. And you sitting there in the middle of the, of the cracked surface, and you out there just calm and collective, like, like you just at a, at, a, at a game, chilling, right? Taking a selfie. That's exactly how Daniel Jones played. He sat in there, made some, you know, beautiful passes to Sterling Shepard in the corner of the end zone between two defenders. He ran for the touchdown. Other than other quarterbacks that we see wouldn't be able to make that play. I saw a picture of Baker Mayfield with a lane wide open for him to eat, to run through the lane and get a touchdown. All right, the, the lane was parted like the Red Sea. And the brother was just standing there and just, I, I just don't understand why he didn't run for the touchdown. Not a lot of guys would make that play. Daniel Jones made those type of plays against the Buccaneers. Let them want to come back. But honestly, at home, I do believe that this is a win for the Giants. Right, the Redskins... They look terrible against the Chicago Bears. And even though they tried to make the game closer than what it actually came out to be, that game was a disaster. That game was a disaster. Case Keenum looked like Case need to go home. I mean, it was just literally that bad. Case looked like Clay. He looked like Clay, Case Close, right? That's exactly what it looked like. Case Close bringing Dwayne Haskins almost. It was terrible. Turned the ball over so many times. So I don't pick. I don't think the Redskins are going to go on the road. And beat a team in the Giants that has momentum. The Giants has momentum, right? And they have a chance to try to pull through and, and be 500. I'm taking the Giants in this game, right? The next game that I got on the list is the Browns at the Ravens. The Browns have been struggling. Um, they won and two in the season. And Baker Mayfield hasn't been playing good. Point bang, period. He hasn't been playing good. Um, Freddie Kitchens, I don't know if this moment is too big for the brother, but it's not looking that good. They lose it to teams that they shouldn't have lost to. They, you know, they just can't pull it out. Now they got to go on the road against a hot Ravens team. And I know the Ravens lost last week to the Chiefs, but they played good. They only lost by four. And if they defense could have made one stop, they could have got the ball back for Lamar Jackson to be able to drive down the field like a surgeon, all right, in the emergency room. Literally, he could have did that. But they didn't get they didn't make that one play. So they at home, and guess what? I believe it's gonna be a close game. I do. 
we, it was a close game last year. Remember, the Ravens had to win that game against the Browns to make the playoffs, and they did. Went down to the wire. Browns could have won that game. I think it's going to be a game similar, right? I know the Browns are struggling, but I do believe it's going to be competitive. I won't be shocked that they go on the road and steal this one. But I'm going to go with the Ravens. If I'm giving you a score, i say along the likes of 27-24. and 24, I mean, 28-24. I got them in about four points. I'm going to go with the Ravens to win that game, right, at home. Now we got the Patriots and the Bills. This is my third game. The Patriots at the Bills. Central New York is, if you're listening to the show, this is the game that you want to hear, right? Because I know a lot of y'all are Bills fans, and the Bills are 3-0. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, because it might not even get better than that. Yeah, 3-0. I, I will give it to Josh Allen. If you watch In the Huddle, Kenny C thinks he's the king of New York, right? And he's played, he played decent. Like I said, I want him to limit the turnovers. I believe if he limits some of the turnovers, he will be a very decent quarterback. Yes, he has his struggles here and there, but to me, he played relatively good so far this season. He got the job done, right? He, he you know, he may, he may have made a key interception in a couple of those games, but he brought his team back. He had a game-winning drive, and they beat the Bengals at home last week, and they all 3-0. But we had the Patriots on the other side. Amid all the Antonio Brown acquisitions and, and, and all the stuff that was going on with Antonio Brown, come to find out this week, Tom Brady wasn't buying the idea of the Patriots getting rid of Antonio Brown. And, you know, like I said, me, it's nothing I can say, right? Antonio Brown has a lot of stuff that he has to fix in his personal life, all right? If you, I'm not even going to say no more than that. The, Raven, the Patriots at the Bills is going to be a good game. I do believe that this, this Bills team is a pretty good team. It's a pretty good team with a pretty legit defense, right? An uh, opportunist-level defense. It's going to be a close game. I got the Patriots winning this game 27-20. to 20. I got them in about a touchdown. I do believe it's going to be a close game, but the Patriots is going to find a way to win this game. I'm taking Tom Brady and Bill Belichick on the road to win this game. Now we move on to the next game. A 4.25 p.m. game. We have the Vikings at the Chicago Bears. And to me, this is going to be another good game. This is going to be another good game. They got the Vikings, who Dalvin Cook is playing very well. I mean, this brother is playing out of out of this world. I can't even put into context what you know what this brother has been doing historically. The brother is a freak, right? Kirk Cousins on the road. I generally don't tend to favor Kirk Cousins in big games. I really don't. The brother always lets me down in the NFL down when it comes to the big moment. And I, I don't know if I'm going to go with the Vikings. I think it's going to be a close game. But the Bears suffocating defense with Khalil Mack. Would turn up the Mack. Would turn up the Mack. I mean, like I said, it's going to be a hard game for me. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bears to win this game. Right? Another close game. I'll take the Bears by um, three points. 23-20. I do believe that they suffocating defense is just going to pro pose problems for Kirk Cousins because like I said Kirk Cousins has ha, has a lot to show me and I'm not going to take him on the road against that Bears defense I'm not I'm sorry but if they can get the ball in the Dalvin Cook hands because that's what they're going to need to do I think they're going to have to run the ball with Dalvin Cook you as your playmaker and try to win a game on the road and control the tempo one more game that I'm going to discuss right and this is a, to me, this is going to be one of the best games of Week 4. And that's the Cowboys against the New Orleans Saints. I do believe this is going to be a close game. Don't get me wrong. I know a lot of games I'm, cho I'm choosing, I think it's going to be a close game. That's why they, my, that's why they call the real little five, right? Because it, they, it, they're going to be close. But the Cowboys and the Saints, obviously, the Saints are without Drew Brees and Teddy Bridgewater is at the helm. But a lot of people, like, you know, like how people, you know, when stuff pops, oh, this is the best thing I've ever seen, a lot of people tend to forget as well. And a lot of people forget that Teddy Bridgewater brought a team to the playoffs. Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater is not just a quarterback that you're throwing into the fire and expecting to be the Messiah. All right, he's already good. He's already good, and I do believe that they're going to make plays. Alvin Kamara went off. Alvin Kamara went off. This brother went off last week, right? And I think that they need to get the ball in his hands. All right, he's a playmaker. 
If he if he's involved in the passing game, let him be involved in the passing game. Get the ball to him in the passing game. If you're gonna run the ball, run the ball. Get the ball in your playmaker's hands. And I believe if they do that, it's gonna be a very, very close game. Um, Michael Thomas, once again, get the ball to your playmakers. Your playmakers is what's gonna win you games, especially when the leader, your captain, is injured. The Cowboys, on the other hand, Dak Prescott. I gotta give it to this guy. This guy is criticized, you know. He takes a lot of flack, and all the brother does is win. I know it's not pretty, but damn it, not everything pretty in this world is good for you. It's just simple. That's like that's a life. That's a life lesson here on the real little show. Not everything in life is good for you, right? You know, never trust a big button to smile. You know the song, Poison. Not everything in life that is beautiful is good for you. Dak Prescott, he wins. He wins. That's all his brother do is win, right? It may not be cute. It may be ugly. But this year, it damn sure ain't ugly. The brother has been playing lights out this year, and he's showing heads that he should be the highest, one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL, even over Carson Wentz. Because he is available. You don't have to worry about him being injured like you have to do with a Carson Wentz. The brother's available. Yes, he has an excellent team around him that makes it easier for him to make the plays that he makes. But guess what? He still got to make the daggone play. And the brother, he makes the daggone play. He's playing good, right? I do want to see Ezekiel Elliott get going a little bit more. I think he will in this game. I'm predicting a nice 100-yard game from Ezekiel Elliott. So I believe Amari Cooper is suffering from an injury as well. So, you know, we'll see. The Cowboys have a good offensive line. The Saints, I do believe at home, do have the home court advantage. You know how the Superdome be rocking. But guess what? The clock is tick-tocking. I got to make a prediction. I'm going to go with the... Cowboys, sadly, to win this game. I'm not a Cowboys fan at all, but I have family members that do. And if they listening, congratulations. I'm picking your Cowboys on the road in a close game um, in the last seconds to beat the Saints on the road and to stay undefeated. Ladies and gentlemen, 607-753-4819 is the request line. 607-753-4819 is the request line. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We're about to be in the second half part of the show, and we got some hip-hop some pop culture topics coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuning into The Real Lil Show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Real Lil, and I am back again. Every day, there are news going on in the world of sports and pop culture, and I get my unique takes on them. Please subscribe to the channel so you can get all the latest updates on these hottest news and see the full episodes on my radio shows, The Real Lil Show, college and podcast version, in the huddle, and what's your grind like podcast. Daily updates, breaking news on my Instagram page, weekly blogs. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoy the content. I mean, I think, you know, the way how he did it was was different. You know, he, he articulated his viewpoints in a more chillax manner. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, it was understandable to a lot of people. But I feel like, you know, protest comes in all forms. You know, you have the, knee, the kneeling. You know, that's a form of protest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of people don't like it, but it's a form of protest. Um, the epic speech, like Martha McGraw, when she was on Notre Dame and she went on the speech about women's equality, that's a form of protest. And then you got the peaceful tweets that could be a protest or mm -hmm. in form of social media. So yeah. he articulated well. And I feel like, you know, people in this generation, especially with Trump in office, they don't know how to articulate their viewpoints without starting a riot, you yeah. know? Ladies and gentlemen, we had a, a nice hour. It went by fast, you feel me? It's almost like time was racing me. But we got by, and now we are back on the show after the intermission. And I got a lot of guests on the mics here, so we're going to have to take this slow, you feel me? John Legend, take it slow. We got to take it slow. But ladies and gentlemen, I got my guests on the show. The president of BSU is in the building, what's SUNY Cortland. What's up, what's up, y'all? How's everything going? Everything's good. I can't complain. We're making big moves out here in BSU. So. I like that. I like that. You feel me? You always got to make big moves. You feel me? That's that's what the real deal is about. That's my motto. And you just said my motto on the show. It's almost like you knew me before, <laughs> way before this. I like that. I like that. So how's everything? How's everything been going with BSU and all that? Oh, man. Oh. So much, so much. Last year we started something really powerful and great with our town halls. We gave a voice to the campus and for people to stand up. And they did exactly that. They stood up and they made a lot of changes this year. So we're just following up and seeing how that goes. 
So before I even continue with questions, I got some other people on the mics right now. I got also got Craig, who's gonna be on a real little show, especially around this time, diving into hip hop. He my he's a, my hip hop aficionado on this show. Um, Craig, how's it going, man? I'm doing well, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. How's everything? It's a pleasure to be here. It's going well. I feel you. I feel you. We also got Mel W Y G L host. You feel me? <laughs> she doing that. She she doing her thing out here. You feel me? What's, What's going up? On, y'all? <laughs> Everything good? Yeah, I'm just hey, the tired. mics is good. The mics is good. I don't even know if the mics are good. Let's do a mic check real quick. Mic one, mic 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 check one, two. Mic check one, two, mic three. Check. Mic check. <laughs> check. Uh, we gonna we gonna we gonna make it work. We gonna make it work. But anyway, so back to to BSU and the questions with BSU. Um, uh, what made you want to be? What made you first want to join the club? And what made you want to be the president of the club? Well, I joined sophomore year, but that was because I started going to meetings freshman year. And freshman year, it was so powerful to see, you know, the, what little minorities we have on campus to come together at least once a week and to discuss important issues that we have, not only like in the country, but on this campus. So that made me really want to join and get involved. And when I met the group, the e board, they were just great to be around. They were just great people to interact with. And I really, you know, developed because of them. And, you know, as a senior, you know, I want to set precedent for the upcoming people coming into the school and the upcoming, you know, juniors and seniors and, you know, um, sophomores. And I really want to, you know, do something special for them. I don't want to leave here without making any type of difference. So that's why I became president. I feel you. I feel you on that. And we, you know, you know, on campus, I would say like last semester, you know, we, we not perfect, obviously, right? Far from perfect. There was a couple issues that went oh, on yeah, last couple, year, couple especially issues. with, um, you know, I don't want to call people out, but guess what? We on a real little show and it's a seven <laughs> something. Right now we 7, 12 p.m. in the night. So guess what? I'm going to do it anyway. We had some problems with ASC, right? Point blank period. We had, yep, there was some problems with ASC. AC and, and how did you how did that feel? Like, what was your mindset when that all those things started happening? And can you explain what happened to the Central New Yorkers who um, were listening? A lot of things happened with ASC. There was from um, racial slurs to sexual harassments to you know people just doing things crazy things to the student employees that had to be dealt with. And so we gave the, these employees a voice and a lot of people in the management of ASC were fired and are not there today. Sadly, there are some people who should have been fired still there, but we're still pushing for that to happen, so. Got you, I got you. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I used to work for ASC and they used to annoy the hell out of me. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> Them cats used to annoy the hell out of me, but it, it's all good, it's all love, you feel me? I was able, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people, you know, they're working for the money. money. You need exactly. the money and sometimes, you know, you just gotta, fight through the obstacles but it's good that you know you and BSU is out here making changes and you know I remember y'all had that meeting and stuff like that exactly. you know it was very powerful over there too it was very exactly, powerful exactly. so that's that's a good thing yeah. um so moving on here was it anything that y'all do over the summer like do y'all do anything during the breaks like I know I think last summer y'all went on a trip I'm not sure oh yeah that was during the school year we went to Philly Philly we do an annual trip every year the year before we went to Virginia Beach the year before that we went to Washington DC we do a lot of fun activities, but also educational this year. We try to push for Toronto, but we don't know, you know, there's a lot of things that you know, we have six. to go through. But um, yeah, so every year we have an annual trip and yeah, that's pretty much it. Nah, if y'all do go to Toronto, Give a shout out to my man, Kawhi <laughs> Leonard out here. And, and Drake, Drake, I can't forget about Drake. That's the thing in Toronto, you feel me? Drake over there, you feel me? I'm in my feelings. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm in my feelings. <laughs> nah, I'm in my feelings. You, you feel me? me? Oh, you got <laughs> it. I'm in my bag right now, bro. I, I said on this show, I came on this show, and the motto has been, I has a lot to say. Mm. Almost like N.W.A. You feel me? N.W.A. Oh, I man. got a lot to say. <laughs> I got a lot on my mind, I Craig. Know. I got a lot on my mind. So, that's a fact. That's a fact, but moving on here so what are some expectations that you have this year for bsu and what do you hope to accomplish before you graduate because i know you we graduating this year yep, right yep. But, you know we we graduating here we got mel graduating yeah. here the real lil's graduating yeah. here my son craig my son craig got one more year uh. but it's all good it's all good we out here though so what do you want to accomplish before you uh walk on the stage with your cap and gown 
I want to see a lot of changes. I want to see a lot of more people of color, not just students, but faculty and staff as well. Um, there's a lot of people who come to me and say, I don't see faculty and professors who look like me. And I'm like, I can't do anything personally. The only thing I can do is bring it up to the people that have the power to do something and try to make a change. You know, um, I just want to bring more diversity and inclusiveness to this campus and, you know, just give um, students a voice, basically. Make sure that they're not afraid to, you know, say what they got to say or to confront certain people in the administration. You know, that's what I want to do before, you know, I leave. And, you know, you know, when you look at both, you know, um, demographics or should I say not both because it's all different demographics that do go to the school. When you look at all demographics, you, you can say uh, where people, they haven't experienced the other demographic. When they go to college, it's their first time, um, you know, really experiencing other people that don't look like them. Exactly. And, you know, me personally, I have experienced other people that look like me simply because I travel. You know, I was, I was, tra you know, I like, to, I like to travel. You know, Mel know me. I was in Cancun, dressed up nice and all that in my shorts. He in a colada. Ah. The pina oh, she already know. Don't even get me started. I could go for a pina colada right now. You know what I'm saying? Especially for Mexico, bro. We just gotta watch it. We gotta make sure Papi doing your thing and not doing nothing he's not supposed to do. Sipping on no drink. Dominican Republic, Dior, man. You gotta stop that foolishness, man. But what that pina colada? She know me. I I was laid up, feet cocked up, pina colada, and I was hearing all the stuff that was going on in the DR right when I was doing when I was drinking my pina colada. Ain't that crazy? Like that's Are like you wasn't in the DR, so you was kind of safe. I was, but it was like vacation though, and guys is coming up to to you like, eh, papi, eh, papi, take um, this. Um. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's like being in Illinois. When Michael Myers is on the loose, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, it really is. Oh man! <laughs> but you feel me? But anyway, there's a lot of hip hop stuff going on right now in the world of hip hop, and you know, you have a business. Before we get into hip hop, you know, let's slow it down. Slow down. You feel me, Bobby Valentino? We out here. So before we get there. Uh, you say you had like a business or something you wanted to promote? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to uh, promote, you know, financial freedom. I think, you know, investing is a great way in, to do that. Right now, I'm part of an investment group called Trey House. We invest in the foreign exchange market. Basically, what we do, we invest different currencies and to take profit. We teach people how to trade and we teach people, you know, how to basically uh, be less dependent on, you know, their jobs and institutions and, you know, make make money on themselves and on their, based on their education and their skill that, that we teach. So do you have like an Instagram or a number that, or a G, or should I say, I don't, you know, you don't want strangers calling your number because it'd be like the movie when a stranger calls. <laughs> but, you know, um, you got like an email where they can reach you to get information. Oh, yeah, or, you could, you know, DM me on my Instagram. My Instagram is Mrs. MRS dot SK5. Um, that is Forex related. So once you join the team, you'll definitely understand what that means. Or you can email me at Bria, B R I A H dot McLeod, M C L E O D, at Cortland dot edu. So yeah. That's what's up. I like that. I like hearing things like that. You feel me? We need more business thinkers in the world. You feel me? I definitely. More do. investments, less problems. And guess what? The world problems will be solved. You feel me? But I mean, hey, money be the root of all evil, so you don't even know. You can't be like less problems for everybody. I feel you. True. You're right it's about that. Freedom. I feel I you. I feel you. I feel you about that. You know, more money, more problems. That is true. But we, we still at the same time want financial freedom. Yeah. Exactly. You feel me? You know, want financial freedom, especially as a college student. It's all about the money. So I have a question about that. Actually, yeah, is that ahead. the same thing as forex? Forex is. It, is um, treehouse. Yes, it's forex. Um, is for an exchange market, just short oh, for an okay. exchange market. So yes, you're just basically trading currency. Different types of currencies? Different types of currencies. So there's US dollars, there's Japanese yen, there's British pounds, there's Swiss francs, there's a whole bunch of currencies. We also sometimes trade cryptos like Bitcoin, um, US oil, and gold as well. So we trade in different type of things and we profit. So I'm telling y'all, Telling y'all, this is this is a way to build up, you know, minority income. I'm telling you. I feel you. That so, that's yeah. that's a lot of stuff. That's a that's a lot of topics right there. One, just that in in general. But you know, as we deal with the mic situation in the back, you know, we we gotta make it work. We gotta make it work. But 
You feel me? It's a small booth. You feel me? That's why if y'all would support black owned radio shows, yeah. we can businesses. be in all exactly. businesses. I could be in a new studio that's tailor made for my talents, ladies exactly. and gentlemen. Exactly. And we can have more so mics. Support the WYGL podcast. Uh huh. Yes, we W-Y-G-L. seek it. We seek it. We're we, seeking for a spot. You we, guys. We, exactly. Uh-huh. We need a liable spot. You feel me? We sneaking, we seeking, we we all that. We need to pass the deacon <laughs> and do what he need to do. You feel me? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. what's what's the similarity? All right, so what is this 4X thing, right? I know I feel like I'm out of the loop. I kind of know about it. People okay. came to me saying 4X, 4X, but I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not trying to get scammed. Because at the same time, like, you know when a lot of stuff people want you to do, yeah. and then you do it, then you yeah. realize it was a whole scam, like the, the facial recognition thing <laughs> with, the, with the bed. Yeah. I wanted to see how I look good with a bed, and next thing you know, Russians is in my phone. You feel me? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I feel like, like off the rip, this kind of like, for most people, it might come off as like a pyramid scheme type of thing. But it's not. In a pyramid scheme, the only person making money is at the top. I'm mm. telling you. You follow the system. You plug into everything we're telling you to do. You actually put in the work. And you make money even at the bottom, you make money. And then from there, months later, you reach the top with a lot of other people. Got to work your way up, brother. You can't just get to the top like, like that. You feel me? The job Unless you, you marry the Rockefeller. I like a pyramid scheme. Me? Think about it. You're never going to be CEO of Target. <laughs> you never, like you know, you're always going to be, you know, at the bottom. So why not invest, make your own money? Because your, your business or your anything, any company you work for invests your money anyway. You might as well do it for yourself, make profit, and, you know, build up your income. Hello. Started from the bottom, now we here. <laughs> so I have a question. So from yeah. Forex, do you find yourself being a, like, like a, I won't say like a professional trader, but it would be more so like a, a full-time trader, or do you plan on using some of the money from Forex to start your own business of your own? Definitely. Forex is a way to build capital. Mm-hmm. And I say that a lot of people who join Forex don't want to do it forever. You know yeah. what I mean? They don't want to invest forever, but they want to know the skills. So just in case, you know, later on, they can always jump back in and invest. You know yeah. what I mean? Um I don't want to forever be a trader, but I want to make enough capital and build enough capital where I can start my own business. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people at part of Forex or the trade house, I should say, who want to do the same thing. They're either entrepreneurs or, you know, want to build a business. But you don't have to be an entrepreneur to do this. You know, investing is open to everybody. You know, you invest and you don't even realize it. You invest every day into college and you're not guaranteed a diploma. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a diploma, but you're not guaranteed a job at the end of the day. You know what I mean? This is this is more of a guarantee than than actually going to college and getting a job. You know? Yeah, I feel you. There's a lot of people that I know that got college degrees that work at McDonald's. You feel me? Exactly. And it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They got college degree working at McDonald's. I know one person. He he a homeless man. He got a college degree. He had to sleep. He his college mm-hmm. diploma is his bed. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Now that was a little side joke, so y'all could laugh. <laughs> y'all not feel sorry. That was a little side joke. That was a little side joke. Oh yeah, we were like, 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 we like, 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 like that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, woo! Friday night, y'all. Friday night. That's what it is. So I want to get into some. Like I said, I got a lot to say. And W A. That's the motto of the show right now. I got a lot to say. The Kashi Six Nine, man. Oh my gosh, Takashi69 is out here snitching. You did it, she did it, he did it, we did it. I mean, that's exactly what this brother is (laughs) doing right now. All I I see is the memes. Like, there was one meme that was like, Y'all ever heard of uh, the self checker? You know what yeah. they do with the soap yeah. chicken? <laughs> like, 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 they be scanning that stuff. They be taking the, you know, like you have a big item, they put that small item with the barcode. Yeah, exactly. They put it all in, like they exactly. just be wild. The, the, the memes, memes are crazy. The memes are something else, man. I mean, this guy is out here telling, bro. And I seen stuff like, you know, when you remember when you was in Dean's office, you ran out your whole crew too. <laughs> I mean that yeah. that's crazy. Because I was gonna get beat by my mama, so I wasn't gonna you know I mean exactly. I wasn't in that predicament, but like when you a kid, like you riding on your homies in the Dean office, like 
It's like something small, but like this right here. I mean, I don't this know. This right here? What was it, like 30 years that they were It was, it was what, 47. 47 years. I would have snitched on you. I would have snitched on you. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even trying to do the math thing. Somebody said something like, oh, yeah, like with him, like the amount of years that um he getting, by the time he get out, he going to be 69. Yeah. I was yeah. 62. <laughs> oh, yeah. my 69. God. That's yeah. funny. 69. That's, That's funny. Oh, That's Sometimes That's this funny. world is built on mathematics. You feel me? <laughs> That's what I got to say. But, I mean, so right now, he just came out, right? First of all, he ratted on a lot of people. He ratted on Jim Jones. He came out? He ratted yeah. on Jim Jones. He ratted on Jim Jones. Casanova, right? He, he ratted Casanova. On. Oh, they out. Um, yeah. He ratted on White Castle, too. He ratted on White Castle. Get it? Fast food spot. Feel me? It's another joke. Uh, he ratted, he ratted yeah. on White Castle. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think White you Castle? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, Yo. who White Castle? Put me on. You feel me? <laughs> Nah, I, if I put Cardi B's name in there too, right? Yeah, That's Cardi B. Crazy. Oh yeah. And, yeah, she she did. He he did actually. You know, he he was did. Trying to be like, yo, Nikki was screaming Treyway in the songs. Get us <laughs> to. <laughs> yo, I mean, the internet always is undefeated. You feel me, like? Nah, he ain't. Mm -hmm. Casanova got playing. goons. Him and Facts. Jones. Casanova. They got Funny. goons. Like he is not feature what? He ain't getting a feature from Casanova, Facts. from Jen Jones. At this point, consider his career dead. Because all the people we'll that see, mess with 6 9 are blood. And the blood in Crip Code is that you ain't supposed to snitch on your homies. That's he what it is. It. His whole it is. career is Finish. That's crazy. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. You you not that's the game code. You feel me? That's mm -hmm. the life. First of all, this brother ain't no daggone game member, bro. Like never to, has been. he never had bro, he don't even look like the type, bro. No. He don't even look like the type, bro. <laughs> so why all them gangsters was in his video? Cause of money. Money. He just talked about money just game now. Game member in them gummo <laughs> videos and all of them. He paid all of them? Yeah. I mean, he know, testified this too that the gummo video that he that was all like a facade that that was all like yeah, yeah all I heard free, that that he wasn't blood before gummo exactly. came out that he bought all those bandanas for the gummo video and he's trying to pretty much say that this was all a lie so which all like we knew the whole time but now he's trying to pretend that oh it was all a joke when yeah. the whole time he was acting like this is really me so he bought all of them and all it was a lot of them in that video wearing bandanas so all of them was so, fake blood apparently whoa i mean this is what they teaching y'all bro that's crazy i mean they need to get a uh, that guy need to honestly if he don't win the Academy Award for Best Actor, bro, I don't. I, I gotta boycott. I gotta boycott because the brother is acting, bro. The brother is out here acting, like really. That's facts. You feel That's me? This guy's acting, bro. He had this yeah. dude. I mean, I mean, I think he should. He was supposed to do time anyway because the brother, first of all, he ordered out hits on people. So a lot of people were trying to dismiss. The, you know, you had that group of people that they all try to stick up for somebody, right? Even though mm -hmm. clearly. They did something wrong or they have to, you know, face punishment for that, right? They still like, oh, well, this and that. Their excuse for 6 9 is that if your friends kidnap you, plot to kill you, this and that, like, why wouldn't you snitch? First of all, the brother tried to get Chief Keef out of here. You feel me? So he's, he ordered a hit on Chief Keef in broad daylight. He didn't brother even have the decency to do it at night. The brother said daylight. Oh, no, nah, I'm scared of Chief Keef. You feel me? I can even hold you. I'm, I'm scared of Chief Keith. I don't even want to meet him. That's how scared I am. Because, no, like, so, so, you good. No, I'm going to have Chief Keith on the show. I'm going to have Chief Keith on the show. My brother going to be like, bang, bang. You feel me? Like, <laughs> he gonna go over here. He's mad calm, but, like, Oh, I feel like man. just knowing like what he's about, I'm scared. Like I don't Yeah, I don't know. I don't wanna That's get close Chicago to homie. Stuff. Man, they know. be like, Different. Oh yeah, I slept with Chief Keep. I said uh. she wasn't scared. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, baby. <laughs> Next question. What are your thoughts on this? Have you seen this conspiracy that he's been in with the feds this whole time? I mm -hmm. definitely heard about that, and I'm not going to lie. Oh, no. That's not out of the ballpark, it's bro. It's not out of the ballpark. It's not. Because he's been pulling stuff like this for a while. Yeah. Like, remember when he was he went to Chicago to Old Block at like 1 in the morning? And like just was like, where's yeah. he at? I don't see Chief Keep. He was going to no. all these different places calling out like these real gangsters. And Honestly, what? Chief Keep is, is not the type to hide. How yeah, you didn't find him? Because she keep will really put himself in that predicament and be like, all right, so if and, you want to do it, do it. And that's why people think he might be, might have been with the feds because who would do this in the right mind would put themselves in that position? Like, unless you're like backed up by, you know, the federal government to save you. I feel you on that. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, when you think about it, the brother, they ain't get into that, that issue where... He was with some little girl. He was messing with some yeah. little girl. He yeah, was supposed yeah. to. That was the first. So he could have. He should have yeah. been serving time. Then the uh -huh. feds could have been like, "Listen, my brother, 
You do this for us. He ain't saying nobody's listening, my brother. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, what, if he, what, what if he was a brother? You know what I'm saying? What if it was an uh, NOI brother, right? That, that, sat, that was a cop or a detective. It was like, listen, my brother, all right? This is what you need to do, right? You need to rat out all these people. You're going to put you in there. And guess what? You're going to be an actor. That could have been it, too. Honestly, it would make sense why he's like a part of the fact. It, it's not like, you know how like he puts out one song and he just blows up in hours. Yeah. Like yeah. that literally, that oh, marketing it is something with him. Yeah. I'm like, this don't make any sense. Like the baby could do that, but it'll take like the baby some days for videos to blow. He could literally get a bunch of millions in one day on a video. I think it's the but way I don't he know. acts. I think it's something. He, he acts like a fool. Like. Think He's about a troll. it, like, Flavor Flav did the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah, boy! Like, it's a marketing strategy. You act like a fool, people are going to pay attention to you. Yeah, it's that's just, a, yeah. I don't know if you're going to pay attention to It is a good too. marketing strategy. I kid you strategy, not. Yeah, it is. But it's a strong marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. And I feel like certain people can achieve it, mm-hmm. and some people can't. Yeah. But for him, like... He it, did it well. He's not dumb. He, oh no! Six, I, six nine is not dumb. Watching he that interview the with the well. um one oh five point one. Yes, he yo. plays the system I'm well. Like, he no, he's a genius. He knows if he does a feature with Nicki Minaj, if he colors his hair a different color, if he has certain you know props in his video, he's gonna get a lot of views. Exactly. He's gonna get a lot of views and attention. Come on. Exactly. You feel me? Now, I think that's that's hit on the money right there. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But basically, another report that came out today. Was that, you know, he's saying no to witness protection. Dummy. He wants to continue. <laughs> you hear your hair, Mel? She called him a dummy. You feel me? Stupid. He wants to get stupid. This brother wants to continue his rapping career, right? It's not, it's not going nah, anywhere. What y'all think about know. this? You're right. I, I, I don't think even it could work. I think 10 I years ago, think it could 15, 20 years ago, this this brother tried to like step back into the streets and start stru- stop tried to step back into his persona. My son said, this brother. My son learned it already. My son Craig, this brother. That's a fact. No, he was shot to the spot. Not this not is a to... whole different age. You know, I think he's got he could pay for security. He could probably jump back in the music industry. He's exactly. he's not that bright of an individual. I don't think anyone has ever considered him bright. So <laughs> Is, you I mean, when he went on the when he went on the Breakfast Club, yeah. the brother. Wait, hold he, on. Did y'all just hear him say pay for security? Yeah. Yes, he has money to pay for security. What? I like the man debate. is gonna put their life on the line for Hello. six. Hey, exactly, nine. bro. If he's paying exactly. enough money, let's thank go, you. Mel. If he's paying enough Mel, money. Mel, W Y G L. She's showing that experience right now. Money. What? Shoot, I'll be his security guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Y'all, he's paying y'all, enough money. Honestly, y'all I mean, not thinking about you. this. Y'all like, all right. When some certain pop off, off, the security guard will get black. Exactly. Right, so, you what, me? so what money? I got you, 6 9 I'll take the bullets for you. I'm being security guard. No. He hands me like a couple of the cans. I don't know. Nah, nah. 100K is not worth my life. Thank Maybe you. Six, my 100k is not worth me putting oh, my no. life on the line because when you die, you ain't gonna get that money anyway. So I'm confused. Back, back. I'm with with like, that. Oh yeah, we're gonna. No, y'all should. What, whoever becomes a security guard, I'm gonna look at them like they crazy. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not gonna say I don't know if I respect you, but it's just like I don't know how far his music career is gonna go because I feel like it's not gonna be just the people he ratted out. The people that he ratted out are probably a part of gangs, and gangs roll deep no matter where yeah. you are. If you if you're a part of a gang, the blood gang in New York, you rocking with Perry people in Cali or Frick, cause y'all mm-hmm. family. So they are gonna be out for him regardless. He gonna have to watch his back a lot. Hello. He's he's crazy Hello. for not going. And I, I don't know. Shoot, and a lot of people even. But when you think about it though, one thing you could say is the witness. The witness protection is gonna be. It's gonna be tough because the brother got six nine red on his face. How the hell he's gonna hide? He's gonna have to <laughs> he got a big six nine on his, his face. Cut his hair. You feel me? He's gonna have to cut his hair. I don't know where he's gonna get. Also, he gonna... what's he gonna rap about? Like he can't rap about. He's gonna rap about. He's, he's gonna. He, he's I think gonna if he does rap situation. again, he's gonna find a way to and make he's it work. Be like yeah, like. I feel like nowadays when we try to cancel somebody, it doesn't work. Like we try to cancel Kanye, and everybody still loves Kanye West. Like, I, I mean, I didn't try to cancel Six Nine. I just feel like it's gonna be hard. Cause I'm being a party like, one wait, I'm rocking with a snitch friend. Now <laughs> <laughs> like, you gonna be like, yeah, exactly. Yo. And you Yo. see him playing his music at the parties. I don't hear no more gummo. Man, I don't true. hear no more anything. That's but true. like, 
That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't know, but I don't think I think it's it. I don't know how they gonna hide this brother if he do go over in this protection. Cause the brother got, like I said, he got all them tattoos and stuff like that. I mean, he he's boy, he gonna have to get the tattoo undone or something like. Yeah. And that, that's on his removal, face. Laser removal is a lot. That's not an easy process. That's a. Yeah, I said they would pay for it. Didn't they? Yeah. Oh, they did. I think they did. The government said that they would pay for it, and I, I thought he said no. Oh, damn! I mean, you might be right. You might be on something. Yeah. The government yeah. Has to pay for. But it's like they would pay for his like tattoo removal. I think that's stuff. what he's saying. I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying, man. That's crazy. Do you wanna live or do you wanna die? He honestly lived like he like the next day is always promised for him. I don't know. Honestly, me, I think he need to go on witness protection, brother. Yes. Once you get in a lifestyle that you didn't need to get into, and everybody like Charlemagne and people was telling you, yo, chill, you don't need to do that, you got money. And once you get caught and you read out your friends, bro. That's how you tell, you could tell he's not a part of that life. Because yeah. a brother, if he was smart enough, he wouldn't know that he has to go to witness protection. Mm -hmm. But he's not about that life, so he don't know the dangers. He, he think that, oh, right, I'm going to get out of here. I ratted all my friends out. Everybody going to love me. My same friends going to dap me up because I got money. And I'm going to be like, stupid, back again and whatever. No, brother. No, you guys is coming after you, guy. Y'all. My Bobby son need to coming out of jail. He about to take over. Oh, you feel me, Bobby Smurda? Bobby Smurda coming back. Bobby Smurda coming back. You feel me? Benito. Bobby Smurda coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, he's coming yeah. back. Nah, nah, I'm not even gonna lie. That's the crazy thing. Like he said, he said, don't, he, he said, don't call my phone. <laughs> they said, no, have you like, heard from six nine? Nope. <laughs> I would not collect the he charges. Said, he better not call my phone either. And I'm exactly. Like, you was going all hard on Instagram. Exactly. What, what's the word I'm looking for? And like disregarded your real son and like mm -hmm. didn't want to claim your real son to look like you. Exactly. But you over here claiming six not a snitch. Exactly. Is that your son? Yo, I'm not even gonna lie. Now I kind of want six nine to come back to his rapid career. Imagine six nine and Bobby Smyrna on the streets. Ooh. I still wouldn't listen. Hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Why you ain't gonna listen, Craig? Let me hear this. You can't listen to this snitch. I don't listen to six nine. I never did. I, I don't think you. he was ever famous for his music. He was always just screaming in the mic. Fucking nonsense. <laughs> I feel you. It was a bop. It was a bop, though. I'm not right. gonna lie. It was, hard, but it was crazy. You feel me? Like, I remember, I, you know, you feel me? Like, I, right, so, like, my mom, she's bigger than the church or whatever. So, sometimes I'm around the church, I'm around the church ladies. And, you know, when I'm around them, they hear this dude, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, and they're like, what the hell is this? You feel me? Like, yeah, 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 bro. Like, now I'm not gonna lie, though, but I would want, what, him and Bobby Schroeder, bro, on the street? Oh, they did have a song together. Yeah. They did? He, he might be doing something. Wait, I thought I was yeah, drinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Yes. I'm like, oh, it's so choppy. But it's you know, so I appreciate bad, the effort. Yeah. I know, because he was in jail, right? Yeah, I appreciate the I could the see, I, could, I heard the inmates in the background. You feel me? That's how choppy <laughs> it was. You feel me? Nah, oh, that's crazy. Me back to a video I seen on Instagram. It's funny. Everybody stopped dancing at that point. They just went to They be like, give me back car. Now that's a fact. But Bobby's better coming back. Exactly. He, he is. And he we'll went see. to jail okay, for five, like what, seven six, years? seven years? Yeah. Yeah. Because he didn't want to snitch. snitch on his friend, yeah. Yeah. So he was that's like, I take dude. half and you take half. So it was supposed to be like 14 or something. So when you think about it, mm. the snitch is getting released and the non snitch is getting released. I want to see how that pans out. Mm -hmm. You get it? The snitch versus the non snitch. Ooh. A lot of people didn't think about it. That's why you tune into the Real Little <laughs> Show to get that knowledge to your dome. You feel me? Now call up this phone, 607-753-4819. I'm a professional. 607-753-4819. I know. 607-753-4819. You said? How many times? How many times? He knows he's gotta get it. Like, I gotta get it into these people's head. That's how you get the callers. You feel me? You gotta drum it in there like Andre Drummond. You feel me? 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. I mean, Monday we broke in the huddle records. We, we was on in the huddle. We broke records, man. The phone, I mean, guys was calling up the phone before the show even started. I'm like, dang, can we get on the mic? I mean, guys in the car. I love y'all. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Feel me? We had to pin the phones. It was that bad. We had to pin the phones. All right, in the huddle. 
that's my three years of college radio experience, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming in, it's coming to fruition, and I got some tuition that I gotta pay. For me, I have to rhyme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really have to support? Ah, 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 stupid! <laughs> <laughs> I will be back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and when we come back, we got some more stuff. We got Mel's ground report. We got we gotta hear what that ground report is. I can't wait. And we also got Craig. He got some new segment that he brought to the show. And we also got President of BSU, Bria, Bria hanging out with us. Ladies and gentlemen, tune into the real little show. No going away. What made you start up this event known as Ballin' for Peace? Um, Ballin' for Peace um came from it came from the whole Mike Brown and Eric Gardner situation. I saw mm -hmm. like a lot of violence going on and like senseless violence. Like it was like, it was a weird time. Like five years ago, it was like weird. Like, you know, yeah. police choking dudes out and like, right. what's, it was a what's going on? And then I mean, nothing happened. It's getting worse too. Yeah, yeah it is getting worse. It, it's, 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 it's insane. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If you look at every, I don't really watch the news too much because every time I watch the news, it's just it's always something. depressing. It's depressing, like, yeah. That's what depressing. I'm saying. Like, I only watch it to know the weather. Exactly. So, like, well, I look at my <laughs> weather channel, tomorrow. I look at it, exactly. all right, cool, I know what to wear. Like, I, you know my what I'm saying? My parents watch that faithfully. I can't yeah, watch that. It's bad though, son. Every time you, they won't, like balling for peace like not no pun intended but like they won't they won't put that out there like ladies ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i got a lot to say this is the real little show and we all back on the show and we got our ground report famously done by mel from wygl let's get it I'm always on my grind, my money will incline. My mother told me rhyme, cause her son is gonna shine. I'm always on my grind. I'm always, always, always on my grind. I'm always on my grind. Yeah, I'm always, always, always on my grind. Oh wow, what's going on you guys? So for the grind report, we have the wonderful and talented Jennifer Lopez and the, the hip beautiful, don't, don't forget beautiful. Lie. The beautiful. <laughs> you know, she's bad. Oh, she's, she's bad. bad. Exactly. I saw hustlers. Well, don't tell me about it. Remember that movie? What was it? The girl next hustlers? door? What was it? It was like a scary movie, oh, but yeah, neighbor, yeah, like a neighbor movie. Door, yeah, yeah, the girl next door. You feel me? Oh my gosh. That scene, brother, I'm not even gonna lie. That one scene had me like, maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. But go ahead, go ahead. But yeah, so we have, of course, the talented and wonderful Jennifer Lopez and Hips Don't Lie singer Shakira is set Ooh. to perform in the uh -huh. Super Bowl come February 20th. 20. Now, this is honestly, I don't know if it's a shocker to me. I don't, like, I really don't know how I should react to this. I feel like at this point, I'm tired of, like, canceling the super the NFL because people still be up every Sunday. When the when, when football Sunday be playing? Night. Sunday every night. Sunday Monday, night, people still Thursday, be out there supporting yeah. football and stuff like that in the NFL. So, at this point, I don't know if, you know, people will find this a problem, but maybe, maybe this is probably what we need is, like, the, the set to break it and I don't know how for the past couple of years I don't think there has been any like women artists like performing but before after Beyonce, Beyonce after Beyonce, Beyonce. Katy Perry she, last Katie time Perry. Was that? Last was after Beyonce right Katy Perry performed after Beyonce she might be before. right okay see I don't watch I'm a sports fan but I don't it's even terrible. watch the performances ladies and gentlemen so don't even get <laughs> mad at me because the performances be terrible <laughs> like last year had Gladys Knight big boy popped up in the car for five seconds and went back I'm thinking we having a Wu Tang. I mean, not a Wu Tang. An outcast, dad going uh, performance. He didn't want to hear the smoke, so he just came out and then went back in the car. Oh my <laughs> exactly god! That was, you might off having if Eddie Guerrero was alive. Eddie Guerrero would come into the car. You know, asapase, For those y'all wrestling fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. The other people is looking at me crazy. Like, what the hell is this guy doing? But wrestling fans, you know what I'm talking about. So you know, at least people know. But I mean, what do y'all think? I, How do y'all like this this lineup? I mean, I think it would be a fun performance. I mean, I, I, I ain't gonna hold you. I think I will watch it because I'm like, yo, it's J Lo, it's Shakira. Like, come on. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of throwbacks. I'm not gonna lie. Nobody really listens to the music yeah. nowadays. J Lo. Oh. Like, I mean, yeah, they J Lo still makes music. Shakira, I think, makes music. Oh, baby, when you talk yeah, like that, it's just gonna be fun <laughs> to watch the throwbacks. Like when um, Justin Timberlake and Kanye West did that duet. Yeah. Oh, 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 you know, performed last year with just his throwbacks, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. his new music nobody really listened to. So yeah, he just... do like the whole nah, hologram. Hologram. 
and people was tight. Did he? He did somebody hollered him. Oh no, I don't think he did that during the Super Bowl, bro. No, he didn't. <laughs> he did that. He might have, but I, think he I don't remember that. I remember that. That y'all remember that that incident with well, um since you brought up Justin Timberlake when Justin Timberlake Just like performed with, Janet, with Jackson. Janet Jackson <laughs> and her, her yes. I think she showed us on the show. I was watching. Oh that. my gosh! I was watching that. She he gave he gave he gave the world a look that they would never forget in their life. But then they said we was in class and we was talking. He was talking about the case where she was, yeah. was just like, oh, uh, it was just like a malfunction. Like she didn't really. I mean, but she took no, a lot of flack she, for that. Yeah, and it wasn't even her fault. It was. She took the most flack. JT was good. JT. Bro, she didn't design her outfit. She didn't. She put it on, but she didn't design the like, outfit. She didn't rip it off. She so didn't know he was going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Nah. You feel me? And then she took the most. Like, people was calling her like, this. Like, what she, was he thinking? I, I thought know. it was an accident. It wasn't Me, an accident. I think it, was. it was an accident. Yeah. He didn't do it on purpose. But you know, when the adrenaline pumping, you feel me? You just act. You just but act. But she acted fast though, because then she covered it like mad fast. Of course, you feel the air. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the air. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do, but that's a fact. I mean, me personally, I like this lineup. I'm not even gonna lie, I do. But at the same time, man, it's not the point, man. A lot of people seem to forget that it shows you that the J the NFL is getting their money's worth when it comes to Jay Z and that partnership. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people don't like that partnership. Some people do. I'm one of those people that don't like that partnership. Why? Because Colin Kaepernick was taking a knee. And a lot of people mm -hmm. was not performing. Cardi B turned on the performance. Rihanna turned on the performance. Jay Z himself told people to turn down performances with the NFL and told people like Jermaine Dupree that listen, since Colin Kaepernick is taking a knee, you don't need to be on the halftime show, ladies and gentlemen. So honestly, the fact that Jay Z's working with them now, the NFL's getting their money's worth, people was waiting for Jay Z to, to do something, to make some type of change that I don't even think he'd be able to make. Because all the change I see is with the news that Mel just said on her ground report. That J-Lo and, and, and dad going, um, Shakira, Shakira. Oh, baby, when you talk like that. I think it's going to be a fun, you I really think it's going to be a fun, fun performance. performance. Yeah. I just don't know how to, like, I'm not going to say I don't know how to say because they're, like, Latina women. But I'm just, like, I just feel like, I, I, can, I think I'm at the point where it's, I don't want to say I'm tired. But it's like so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I don't know about, and that's what's making me iffy still about this situation. Yeah. Because it's like, didn't you say before that he took money from, like, Colin Kaepernick took money from the NFL? Yeah, he reached us a settlement. Like, I believe um him and his was it from teammate, a lawsuit or? Like, um, well, yeah, it was from the lawsuit. He sued the NFL, okay. and oh, the NFL, sure. you know, made a settlement with him. And in the settlement, he couldn't really say nothing about the process of what was going mm -hmm. on. He just had to, you know, like, you know, brother, we playing the silent game. Shh. And he had to stay quiet. He had to stay so, quiet. I mean, well, yeah, because I feel like if he didn't stay quiet, they were going to take that money away from him. Like they always do. They got power. Oh, of course. Well, you know, me personally, I like the fact that we getting good performances. You feel me? And that mm -hmm. to some degree, we got to be thankful for that because, I mean, those terrible halftime shows. I mean, last year, I was, I was typing a paper. I was like, brother, please, okay? I don't want to see Big Boy come out in five seconds, tip his hat, and then go away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, I don't like it. Perform. I don't like it. Travis and Maroon 5. I didn't, I didn't really like it. The last person I saw was Beyonce. But was it... I'm confused. So Colin wasn't kneeling around? Yeah, Colin wasn't kneeling around. Yeah, Colin wasn't kneeling around. Yeah, was it Colin wasn't kneeling around Beyonce time? That no no, no, no no he, he wasn't he wasn't yeah, he wasn't no, he was no, no he wasn't because he was that he was in the Super Bowl was nah. that was that was twenty sixteen nah, 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 nah. Beyonce the year Beyonce performed and the lights went off was when Colin Kaepernick was in the Super Bowl nah she performed again because then she turned around and dropped lemonade no nah, I'm telling I'm telling you yo. I'm telling you. you know, dropped I'm telling you. Was on a senior year, the, the sports fan. Right. At that point, I'm telling I'm you. I'm telling you when the lights went off. I remember the game. That was yeah. she the, the Ravens twice. played the 49ers that day. Colin Kaepernick was playing. The Ravens was up you know, 30, the, the three or something like that. It was up. Then the lights went off. It was the and Broncos. And the 49ers came I'm back. I'm telling you, it was the Broncos. The Broncos. Unless she performed the game. I don't, see, I don't watch the halftime shows, but I do know she the game. She performed in 2013, and then she turned around and then performed in 2016. I right, look it up. Look so it up. I didn't even know. That's the year. Peyton Manning won the Super Bowl. So what was the Super year? Bowl. The so other year is probably with the Broncos, whatever, and the lights went out. That was Destiny Child. That, that was 2013. 
20, but Beyonce, but with Destiny Child, yeah. it was twenty thirteen. So we both right then. You was right, but we she both performed right. again in twenty sixteen because okay, that's when yeah, she yeah, dropped yeah. Lemonade. Yeah, you right. right. After. But that's I'm talking about the one where she was with um with the, with the um Destiny the Pussy Cat. That though. was I mean uh, I said Pussy Cat. <laughs> the Destiny Child. Yeah, that was yeah. in twenty thirteen. Excuse me, excuse but me. But we was trying to we was trying to say that like was Colin Kaepernick kneeling around twenty sixteen. Nah, not that. It was around that, but um, he was. that year when he was with um Destiny Child, he didn't he he didn't kneel yet. He just yeah, was no, in the Super Bowl. No, I'm not talking about twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was. this is the thing. Beyonce performed. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to hit at. Like, but he was still in the um NFL at that. It time. was freshly new. Yeah, he, was he wasn't. He didn't really. It was a fresh new black ball. Now he we know that he's black ball. Before it was like. He may get a job, he may not get a job, and that was around that time. Yeah. But now, we already know it's apparent after all these years that he's not getting a job. He's not going to the NFL ever, which you is feel me? terrible. Yeah. Terrible. I mean, honestly, they at first I was upset, but I'm not that upset because the brother got paid. The brother got a Nike commercial. Yeah, he I'm got okay. money. He got his due diligence. He took a settlement. <laughs> Brother, I'm happy. I don't think he's, all he's I know is that, right now. All I know is that like, he could, like, you know how Deion Sanders play, like, 14 sports. Yeah. Pick up another sports. So I bet you um NBA gonna pick him up. Nah, sure. he can't get into the NBA, man. He can't get, get in. He can't get into the NBA. She think she think that you could go to any sport you want. Oh, NFL didn't work. I go to the NBA. Michael Jordan. He is. Michael Jordan. Now Michael Jordan did do it. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, he went to baseball. Yeah, he went to baseball. <laughs> yeah, he went to baseball. He went to baseball and came back. Yeah, he came right, back. So what about Deion Sanders? Did he achieve in any all of them? I know Deion he achieved Sanders, in football. Dan Sanders was the, was a defensive cornerback. But what did he do in baseball? Was he successful in baseball? Outfielder. Baseball came after football, though. Wait, what? I think his baseball career came after his... Wasn't he playing football? But he was playing... The only Deion Sanders I know basketball. was no. football. That was the I'm only Deion Sanders. He said. played baseball too, bro. You should have watched his reality show. It was really good. He talked about all his credentials. See, he played like pop, two different sports. This is what pop culture really? do. I had no idea. Yo, Deion Sanders was playing. He like, must have been not good because I only found Deion think, Sanders. But he was. Nah, was she's stupid. not lying. Deion Sanders did play baseball. See, I don't know. I don't know that oh, because I follow. I followed um what? Deion Sanders when he was one of the best it's quarterbacks crazy. of all time. Honestly, I didn't and the showstopper from with the band reality bandana. show and it was really good. He was like, I played this, I play I'm a professional yeah. football. Well that's why they called this sports and pop culture show. You feel me? No, it was really a good show. Like I really want him to bring it back, but his family go through too much, so he has to take that off. <laughs> nah, but I, I really enjoyed that. his show. He should bring it back for real for real. It was like a real life, it wasn't no like the only drama was probably like between him, the kids, and they, they his baby mom. Yeah. But because you know, all of that. But it was an overall good show. Mm. It was good. I, I like Run House. Saturday. You need to bring back Run's House. That's what they yeah. really need. They yeah, really need to bring show, back bro. Run's House. That's a fact. I'm about to DM Diggy because he can't. Yeah. Be <laughs> <laughs> like, get off the ground and go home. Okay? That's a fact. That's a go fact. Go back to your parents' house, but they done flipped the whole house. They done turned everybody's room into a different room. They really? Done, yo. They did a house renovation. They done took Angela, JoJo room. They done, the house they done turned it into something else. Now Miley got a bigger room. Mm -hmm. Rusty got his <laughs> own little room. Like they really switched that house around. I'm like, they wow, can't even come over for baby. Christmas dinner. Right, <laughs> like, that's like all they rooms away. Like, you out, you out. I'm expanding this. I'm breaking this down. They made, I think, Diggy room a closet. Wow. Like his thing is not even livable no more. And I'm oh, like, man. that's why they can't bring it back. They gonna take their rooms and flip it into something else. The beauty of having money. Right? That's a fact. That's a fact. You feel that me? We talked about money. Show. We also giving y'all investments show. in this show, man. Exactly. I mean, that's where you get on the real deal show. You feel me? We dropping gems. We out here, I, I try to find something that rhymes with gems. So I, I was going on the path, but I'm like, damn, it's hard to find something that rhymes. But then five seconds, friends. When you, friend, ah, we dropping yeah. gems. Y'all listening with y'all friends, Ooh, making like new that. friends. You, I, you know Greg is a rapper, right? So wow. he, 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 he's a producer uh, first, okay. but he got a little flow. He said that mad like producer first. He got to ask that in there. You a producer. Yeah. You feel me? I'm a pro <laughs> exactly. Mm, you feel me? We out here, ladies and gentlemen. The real little show. And when we come back from a very, very, very short commercial break, um, and the music being played on the on the hour right now, um, we got Craig. He got a new segment that he brought into the show this week in hip hop history. For those of y'all people that listen to this new joints, which is good, I'm not gonna lie, I be bumping. You feel me? But yeah, I learned y'all history too. Craig got y'all with the history. Don't go nowhere. We on a real little show. All 
All right, y'all, we on a real little show, and I'm going to hand it to my man Craig for today's segment, which is This Week in Hip Hop. Thank you, brother. Uh, how's it going tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Central New Yorkers, people on the stream? Um, formal introduction, my name is Craig. Uh, first time on the Real Lil Show, so thank you very much for bringing me on here. Pleasure to have you, brother. And, Pleasure to have uh, you. I'm glad to bring to this show the very first ever segment of This Week in Hip Hop. So each week we're going to be doing this thing where we're going to take a look at uh, what happened in hip hop history uh, in this week. Um, so let's start it off. This week, on September 24th, 1991, 28 years ago, a tribe called Quest released their second studio album, The Low End Theory. Classic album. Classic, classic, classic album. album. So this album gave us classics like Scenario, Check the Rhyme, which we just heard. When we just played, uh, yeah. Bugging Now, Excursions, you know, all sorts of things. Um, and this album was special for a lot of different ways. Um, one big thing is that it rejected one of the main prominent genres of the time, gangster rap. You know, um, at this time, 1991, uh, Dre and Q, you know, they were popping. Um, N.W.A. N.W.A. I got something to say. Y'all heard my line throughout the show. Gangster <laughs> rap was the prominent genre of the time, you know. Um, Dre and Q were releasing albums full of violence and aggression um, by pretty much painting pictures of life in the projects at the time. And it was selling records and it was hard. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But Tribe tried to do something different at this time. Tribe released an album with barely any curse words and very few violent references, which is rare for rap, especially today. Very you rare. know, my mother could probably enjoy this album. Most of the tracks on this were uh, focused on lyrical wordplay <laughs> as opposed to trying to convey any type of, you know, message in particular. Um, and this is, this was special for the time. Now, I like the fact that you said my mom could enjoy the album. She I'm not going to lie. My mom could enjoy fun. the album, too. It's jazzy. Are you going to feel me? Like, all the parentals be enjoying yeah, the album. Yeah, all the seven-day yeah. events is going to be enjoying that album. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. No cursing allowed. Ten exactly. commandments. Not so, talking about Biggie either. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. But so a couple, uh, couple of fun facts about this album, if you don't mind. Go ahead, so go ahead. A lot of people don't know, but uh, Q-Tip, one of the, the front men of this, they had to pull uh, Fife Dog, rest in peace, the late great Fife Dog, off the streets to put this album together. So in 1990, Fife Dog was still a reckless Jamaica Queens teenager, focused on partying, getting women, having fun. You know, music wasn't his first priority which is why on their first album, People's Instinctive Travelers and the Passive Rhythm, Fife was only on four songs, I believe. But in a Rolling Stones interview, Q-Tip explained that he went up to Fife Dog, he was like, listen, I want you on this album. You got talent, but I need you to step it up. I need you to be serious. And that's what he just did. He did that and they created something special, obviously, because this album has a lot of longevity and a lot of influence yeah, on people. Facts, facts. A tribe called Quest, you know, they they right, they up there, they up there, they up there as far as like, sure. you know, the groups, you know, you have a lot of groups out here that like we talked about during the, the commercial break, you know, uh, fight, uh, I'm about to say fight the power, public enemy, you know what I'm saying, they know for fight the power, throw up the fist, you know what I mean, but um, public enemy is over there, you know, you got a lot of groups that we talked about, we're going to talk about the Wu-Tang Clan, oh, yeah. and with a special documentary that they have, or whatever, mm -hmm. but what was like, <clears throat> you said you had like a backup option over the break. What was that? What was that? Um, that backup option. I, guess, I believe it was Drake. You feel oh, me? Oh yeah, saying? for the for the topic. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you had Drake. I mean, was... I was looking at this week in hip hop. I didn't really know anything else, and that wasn't even actually on the website. But September twenty fourth, twenty thirteen, Drake dropped. Nothing was the same. And that has been on the Billboard yeah. 200 since then. Yeah. It still hasn't left the Billboard yeah. 200. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. Well, Six years later. Things on my so that's pretty crazy. Facts. I could have talked about that, but I kind of wanted to educate the youth a little bit because we don't talk too much about this. And shout out to Mel, actually, because she had a birthday this week, right? So yeah. shout out to WYGL podcast host extraordinaire, promotions director. I was the baby. Yes. Mel, you feel me? You feel me? You yeah, word. Heard. You feel me? I almost almost slipped a, a word out there that I wasn't supposed to slip out, but we good. <laughs> you feel me? We good. Hey man, before we move on, let's talk about the impact of this album a little bit, can we? Let's 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 go. So this let's is go. actually a very huge album for the time. Um for the main reason that this is one of the first times in hip hop history that that genre really embraced the jazz the jazz genre. It wasn't done too much before. So there were other people exploring the you know, the blending of the two genres, like Gangstar of Brooklyn, he was exploring it at the time. And Dre was actually exploring stuff like this. People don't know. We talked about it before. Uh, N.W.A. How they wanted to do something different than what N.W.A. was doing, but 
this album was heavily inspired by N.W.A.'s album Straight Outta Compton, because Dre had this new style of production at the time where he was taking people's records, he was flipping them and adding a West Coast yep. twist to them. Yep. You know? A lot of people like to credit Dre for um, bridging the gap between funk and rap music. And a lot of people can credit uh, Tribe Called Quest for bridging the gap between jazz and rap music. It's just funny because those. jazz is just something that didn't really last too long like it was supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Like jazz is not here no more. Yep. Hey, I, mean, I, I like jazz, you feel me? Like Jazz is still here, but the reason being why it's not like... Oh. <laughs> The reason being why it's like not as prominent is because like of historical context where mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, different jazz players had, it was jazz. It was African-American men and women that was into jazz. And then of course, once um, different white men got into the business, they were starting to capitalize off of it. Mm -hmm. Then jazz, it's still there. It's in Latin music. It's in, um, you know, you hear like some of the, you know, jazz within like African, you know, tribal music as well. Like all of that is clashed together. So jazz is not completely gone because it's in a mixture of different things. But just know that like when capitalism came about and, you know, as black people wanted to reclaim that type of music, of course, when um, different white men and women got into the business, well, mostly white men because women, white women was on the back burner. But when white men got into the business, that's when they started taking over even with blues it's just like they just started taking over so i yeah. see rows of green <laughs> red and blue you see me i see you and i, I say to it. myself so what, a they had a raspy voice. what a wonderful show <laughs> the real little show and i say to myself <laughs> yep. what a wonderful show but craig you ain't lying I the gap being bridged between hip-hop and jazz when Tribe Called Quest to me was the amazing. Because a lot of the tracks the album Facts. feature a lot of slow tempos, heavy trumpets and pianos, and the juxtaposition excuse me, of these lays back jazz instruments with the classic heavy hip hop drums and bass, you know, made for an interesting listen at the time. But we're kind of more used to this now because of the impact that they played. And there's so many artists today that were influenced by this that make jazz rap. For example, Mac Miller, rest in peace. Early Kanye West, soul. Isaiah Rashad, Saba, Chance the Rapper, Action Ooh. Bronson, Anderson Pack, Thundercat, mm -hmm. Tyler the Creator, and Kendrick mm -hmm. Lamar. Yep. The, All influenced by them. And let's not forget, you know, the producers that make the music for them, because they play just as big of a part, you know, in their music. Let's talk about Ninth Wonder, Jay Dilla, Rest in Peace, The Alchemist, uh, MF Doom, and No ID are a lot of not noticeable are notable jazz rap producers of this day and age, so you know, it, it's the list can go on about how much that this album has, you know, played a part in shaping hip hop history, and you know, it really should be talked about more. You mentioned Mac Miller, and there's some some issues going on with Mac Miller. I believe there's people uh -huh. getting um charged with the the link to his death and there stuff is. like that. Really? What's, what's up? What's, what's up? You know a lot about that? Not too much about it. But I, I didn't even, I didn't look into it too deeply. Mm -hmm. I seen it. But um, I, I just was like, wow, when I was saying to myself, you feel me? Like, there's a couple people that's getting, like, three people, I believe it was. Yeah, the third person just got uh, charged just the other day. Wow. For so, what? Like, yeah. it's like for, like, um, supplying the pills, like the fake pills, you know? Because he asked for Percocets, I believe, and he just got fentanyl, and that's why he OD'd. Mm. So the third person, the first person got charged, like, two or three weeks ago. Second person, like, maybe two weeks ago, and I think just last night, maybe two days ago. Yeah, it was like a two days ago. It was like yeah, two days ago. Charged, so he's coming to start. I, I'm happy to see justice being served. You know, that's my man, Mac Miller. He influenced me to do a lot of things that I do today. So I, I'm happy to see justice being served. But His influence sad. is up there. He, he does have a lot of influence between him and X that we lost too. You feel me? And yeah. we lost Nipsey as well. Exactly. Uh, you know, a, a lot of year. people we losing in hip hop. You feel yeah. me? That's why we always gotta have appreciation, even for the those the OGs that are still living. That's why we have this segment that Craig just brought into the show, and I think is a dope segment because we want to give you your flowers while you here, not yeah. while you not here. You feel exactly. me? That's what we want to exactly. do. And that's what we should start doing more. So we also gotta give our flowers to Wu Tang Clan as well because Wu Tang Clan Wu -Tang. Ha was to me. I call them literally. I don't even gotta come up with a list. We don't gotta debate. I mean, if you want to debate, but me personally, that's that's the that's the goat group, Ooh, hip hop dang. group. Ooh, you call of them all, of all time Ooh, as a group, a as a group, not individual. Ooh, all right, dang. so who do you think? Who do you think? 
As a group? As a group. As a group. The number one hip hop group, they impact, bro, was so beyond hip hop. Yeah. Even down to the fashion, the t shirts, and, and all the stuff that they sell. You're going to say like, more than NWA? I was about to say that. Ooh! I was about to say that. Different I still. I still different no, don't do that. They're not all the I'm not going to lie. No, NWA NWA's top three. Yeah, it had a huge impact. Even. When Drake left, Ice Cube left, they still had these huge impacts. But Wu Tang did too. Wu Tang was not stealing that. Huge. I'm not stealing that from. Wu -Tang, I don't know. Though. I wouldn't. I don't know who's better. I wouldn't say anyone's better than the other one. I just know that they both had a huge impact. I, I, me, I, both of them had a huge impact for sure. They top three has to be in your top three. Be talking about groups. Yeah. But I know not, the Wu Tang got they they influence on pop culture alone. Like I say, I say, um, N.W.A. had more impact on society. I would say politically. Politically, mm. um, Wu Tang had more effect on the culture itself. So they was more had a social impact while N.W.A. had a political. Had, impact. Yeah, exactly. I feel like N.W.A. kind of broke down the door a little bit, and because they took a lot of like slack for this, yeah, they deal yeah. with all like the. The police, police rushing yeah, the stage yeah, and stuff and like that. And we already know how Mel loved their biopic. You, if you watch the real little yeah, show, I, I she I she in love with that biopic they did, yeah. which is an excellent biopic, by the way. I loved it. I think it's so excellent because they were behind it. I'm tired of seeing like they. It was I, granted, Easy E wasn't there, but they were able to get like they were with him, so they was mm -hmm. able to see all of this play out. Mm -hmm. But the simple fact that you had. You had Yellow, you had um, MC Ren, you had Dre, you had Cube, all coaching their actors and how to portray them. I just feel like it was just an amazing, well, like, thought out biopic, but like with Dr. Dre himself, you know, he left out a couple of things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We shall let it run biopic. Yeah. I said, sorry, you know, missed out a couple of things yeah. from your biopic. That's, be that's what they usually do. They, they make themselves yeah. look good. Don't yeah. Yeah. Of course. He was looking like Gotta a make good it. man. When Misha Le dropped that bio, yeah, he had some abuse. Yo. Bro. In NWA, Yo. in that movie, yeah. Dr. And Dre looked like a Seven Day Adventist, bro. <laughs> you would have thought he was a Seven Day Adventist, Dr. Dre, in that biopic, bro. Yeah. But when somebody else dropped something, bro, Yo, you looking like the like opposite. It, it was over. He wanted to sue her and everything. You I was me? like, he did a lot of stuff. That's the power you know? of the documentaries, as we see a lot of documentaries like R. Kelly and, and MJ. You know, those uh, everybody has his narrative. They can make you look good, and they can make you, you look bad. bad. You feel me? That's just how it is on the culture. But like I said, going back to the Wu Tang, they they impacted me on the culture is phenomenal, and they they continue having shows. They had the um the other show, which I believe was a documentary, yes. the, three, the three part documentary. It was, was it three, three parts? Four, three four, four parts, parts four or whatever. Parts documentary on Showtime. Yeah, that was, that was I love that. They, I they like went that. from when they were kids yep. up until today. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, they they showed videos and pictures of their family and. Everything that they went through, they were sitting arrested. in the room in, in the theater and yeah, looking at everything. Like, I, I thought that was they cool. spoke in like their own separate rooms, and then when they got together, and it was just mm -hmm. it was crazy. It was very, no, nah, it was a it was like, an sentimental, man. like it was crazy. They didn't realize things until they saw it, like they really like went exactly. back and saw how much of an impact the that they, they had. had. And when you're in the moment, you don't realize your impact, mm -hmm. and you also don't realize what you have until it's gone. Mm -hmm. When these guys was cooking up. And they, 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 they was hustling. They had to do it. They had to sit there and hustle. And then when they got the money, and I obviously, as you see, with broken relationships, things start to, like, disappear and stuff like that. Then they come back and watch everything, and they're just like, wow, we really was, we was tight. Like, we was the, one of the best hip-hop groups of all time. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's what you got to do when you're working with people is that to realize what you can do and the impact and how far you can go instead of you know egos sometimes come come into play egos come into play life situations come into play people lose a family member mm. or stuff like that so for them to be dominating as long as they did dominate and to put out the hits that they did put out and then still have another show that they just made that i'm gonna get into a little bit the the wu-tang clan american Sadly, saga yep. i'm not gonna yep. lie you watched it? I watched that show oh, by yeah. accident. I don't have Hulu. I don't have Hulu. Come on. Come on. I watched that show by accident. By, you on Hulu. <laughs> it came up on my fire stick. It came up on my fire stick by accident. I was like, oh, I forgot about that show. And I clicked mm. on it, bro. And I've been clicking on it ever since, bro. I'm not even going to lie. 
That yeah. joint is nice. Yeah. But a lot of people don't mess with Hulu. So I say Hulu. When they say <laughs> when, when it came on in Hulu, I'm like, why Hulu? Not I mean, Netflix. It's all about like, the it's all about the money, to be honest with you. I guess Netflix wasn't, you know, trying to buy it, you know, not. for for that much. Hulu was probably giving that money, so it was all about that. You feel me? Like I'm like Hulu, bro. Like you don't hear big stuff, and it says Hulu by you. Feel me? Yeah, like true. it's more like Netflix. Like the Bird Box was Netflix, or the documentary. Some documentaries was Netflix, and and Dave Chappelle when he had that man magnificent. Magnificent oh, so stand up comedy. So the new one? The new one. Oh my oh god, no. Nah. It was funny. That was so it was funny. controversial. Bro, it was controversial, but I like it. <laughs> it was Because, uh, you know what? He's an it's old hard. comedian. Like, you know what I mean? And, I mean, not that he said anything truly offensive that I believe, but some things, you know, he could have. Kept to For today. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Dave Chappelle. When you yeah. had that much years in the business yeah. and you yeah. know him to be funny, yeah. Dave yeah. Chappelle is one of the only comedians that can get away with the things that he said and not be on and be on scape. Other guys, yeah. they would have did that. They would have got the hammer. Get so this guy out of here. Kevin Hart, so. you, yeah, that's what, what happened Oscars. with his tweets in the what? Oscars. Yeah, you feel me? He's still, you know, mm -hmm. going through something that he apologized for in the back. In the exactly. back end, you know, a lot of people. Yeah. That's what social media is. You know, a lot of people they say stuff when they're not thinking, when they're young, yeah. and then they have to account for it. 10, 15 years yeah, later, and they are totally different. They have a totally different Your mindset. mindset. You feel exactly. me? Like, even when you saw like Justin Bieber, I believe that he wasn't. I believe that he said controversial things and stuff like that he in the past. No, he was doing and and then when he yeah, got like older, he got more mature. And yeah. I see a more mature Justin Bieber now. Yeah, he's yeah, a whole engaged man. Yeah, he's, he's in a different really phase. Different, yeah. You feel me? So it's always good when people can progress and not regress. You yeah, feel me? Absolutely. And something. you feel me? You know, you know how it is. Absolutely. I got something to say. <laughs> NWA. <laughs> but <laughs> back to Wu Tang real quick. Um, what do y'all? If who watched the show over here? I know Craig. You watched watch the show, right? So far. Craig, what do you think about it? What do you think about it? I love the show a lot. Um, just coming from a perspective of someone that makes music, it kind of really puts things into perspective because. I really have no excuse when it comes to making music. Once I watch something like this, like what RZA went through just to get that SP 1200 yeah. he had, he was, you know, like selling drugs. He got the thing finally, and, and then he had, had to, to give sell it, it back. So he, he had get to his give brother it back out of jail. His brother went to jail yeah. for those who haven't seen it. The, the, his spoiler went alert! To jail. I should have said I should have said spoiler alert, but you know I'm, yeah. I'm clickbait right now. <laughs> so he had to give bait. the thing back so he could get money for the bail. And then he has to work his way back in the, I don't think at the point that we're at that he has it back yet, mm -hmm. episode four, but it really kind of puts things in perspective, man, because nowadays it's so easy. You know, the software, you download it, it's on your computer, it's right there. You I buy did, yourself you a MIDI that. keyboard for 50 bucks, you know, audio interface for 100, couple nice speakers for 300, boom, it's there. That was two thousand bucks that beef had that thing that he bought. Yeah, so and like, it's it, it it goes back to the crazy. times where like you know before you had to really hustle. Like guys like Jay Z was selling tapes out their car and stuff like that. Now you just got Spotify, SoundCloud, SoundCloud and everything is just exactly. so easy. I'm not gonna even hold button. you, but like I feel like I missed the whole thing of like. Hearing like not struggles, yeah. Hearing real life, not real life, but hearing struggle stories, but they have to go through so much. Like I appreciate exactly. to hear how hard a person works work to get where they have to go because honestly, it just takes a viral video. Really yeah, does. and it I'm really not gonna do. say that's really not really hard work, but nowadays these rappers is like, oh, I just started rapping two years ago. Who? Exactly. All these other rappers been rapping since they was 11. Yeah, Half of them exactly. didn't make it until they was in their mid 20s and had to hustle to get the okay, equipment that they exactly. had to get, to get where they have to be. Like, I feel like nowadays you don't have to work hard to become a rapper. All it takes is legit one viral video and that's it. Yeah, and look at 6 9 that's why 6 9 is famous. And one by exactly Lil Pump. Right he just, he oh, was, exactly. He was like, Shorty, uh, catch me outside, Shorty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch me outside. Get me outside. Shorty. She rich and poppin'. I'm like, who is this also, shit? Also, uh, being ratchet. Her ratchet. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like, her mother. Yeah. Exactly. It's a shame. And I'm like, I don't appreciate this whole thing where everybody just want to be like, I think I could spit a couple of bars. I've been working for like two years. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, shorty, brush up. Thanks. Brush up. I'm not. I'm not like a good rapper. I'm not even a rapper. Let me say that. <laughs> I'm not a rapper. <laughs> I'm not a rapper. <laughs> Sorry, but I do appreciate. 
hip hop. I appreciate good hip hop. I appreciate hard working hip hop. I appreciate exactly. the hustle. I appreciate the struggle because it makes you understand like, damn, what am I doing in my life? So oh, yeah, it was definitely a, a different fact. time back then in the eighties, nineties. They always had to work. Always had to work, especially as a minority. You have to work. Put in that ten times as hard as work as you know people not of color. And nowadays, it's just, it seems so easy. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's one viral video that just, yep. like, boosts everybody's career. Not even. You could just be Instagram famous. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's all you exactly. need. That's how high high things came through. Yeah, high, or, um, what's his name? Old Town Road. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, he remixed the song, and that, sh that went popular in, what, days, a week? Like, you know what I yeah, mean? Like, he's even dominating the billboard. Exactly. Now, it's like, it's crazy. That's all you need. I'm not going to lie. I can't sing the song the same. Like when he when he said what he said, ride till I can't no more. You know, I I me personally I can't sing the song the same. But I like the song though. I think it's a dope. I, mean, I, like like, I like him. I like him. I like him. I like the song. It's a thing. I like the song, but a certain it was a certain really time of the song. Cyrus's yeah. song. Because he was pissed because they took him off the country charts. Facts. Like, yeah. Yeah. That was messed up. That was messed up. He remixed the song, but he got like approval from Billy Ray Cyrus. Exactly. Like he got approved and everything, and then they did the song together, and they still don't acknowledge him as a country singer, exactly. which is, which sucks. But but well, that's how life is, man. But mm. back to the documentary, I know you, I know you, you saw it, man. Why, yo, you know my heart hurt when Ja's son, right? For those of y'all who watch yeah. the documentary, when Ja's son got shot, that was bad. and a lot of a lot of that documentary, what I take from it. Outside of it being a good documentary that I enjoy that I'm gonna watch the next episode. I'm on I'm on I'm on episode five right now. Me too. Mm -hmm. Right Me too. there. Yeah. So I gotta I gotta catch I'm up on sorry. episode five. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta start you gotta start. Excellent yeah, show. Yeah. Excellent show. Yeah. 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 If you got a fire stick <laughs> if you got a fire stick, you lit. <laughs> but um when they killed Josh's son, bro, and it, a lot of it goes back to show you like it really shows you the hood and the hustle and how people really have to hustle out there. You see these people like these guys, in order for them to put food on the table, they gotta, you know, sell this and sell that. And a lot of people look at it like, oh, they bad guys, but that's the life, that's the environment that you put into. You feel me? Yeah. So that's what I like about the show that it shows. And then the mother and son relationship. Where yeah. um, I'm still trying to get these guy characters known. <laughs> I'm still, I'm near, I'm near the I show. It's man. four episodes. I don't know everybody. It's like a professor. I, I know professors that had me for a whole semester. Don't even know my name, so I'm not even feeling bad like that. But yeah, it's like the guy um that's messing with. The dude daughter and he his mother was sick and stuff like that. And you saw the element of how drugs affected that relationship. Remember he has a two disability sons, the sons yeah. with disabilities. Mm -hmm. You know what guy I'm talking about. Yeah. And and his mother is was on was on, you know, on drugs yes. and whatever. And how like he tried to have a relationship with his mother, but his mother couldn't even function because her mother was on drugs. You see how that mm -hmm. happens with the family. So like I like the way I like the message that the, the show is also portraying, the hustle side of it. With um Rizza, uh, he had to hustle to get that that play or whatever, so Not he could spend some Rizzo, records. A lot of them had to hustle. You feel me? And guys was just blowing rap away like, nah, I ain't I ain't trying to rap today. I gotta sell yeah. these these rocks because I gotta provide for my family. Yeah. And Rizza yeah. is just always finding a way to just to spend records. The brother can stand there for hours. That's like me on the radio. Yeah, I just sit there for hours, bro. Five hour shows. I ain't gonna keep y'all waiting too long. We we still gonna close, but. You feel me? That like I love that document. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I, I love like that, that part when he gets up on the stage, and um, they went to the rap battle, and everyone's pretty much <laughs> rapping the same thing about yeah. money and degrading women. You know, typical rap stuff. And then Rizzo yeah. gets up there and tries to start spitting some like acapella, like I don't know, like something that like is more popular today, like deep rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you remember that part? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I mean, he got booed. He got, he booed. got booed. He, he looked terrible. That's crazy. I'm not it's gonna lie. At first, I thought maybe it was something there, but like you know, it, it didn't work out. You feel me? It didn't work it out. Just but it goes to show, man. You can't listen to what's popular. You can't mm -hmm. listen yeah. to people around you. Like, if you really feel something in what you're making, you really gotta keep pushing for it because he obviously felt something and spit an emotional rap. He didn't want to just start spitting about degrading women and you know everything else that was popping at the time. Like he wanted to do his own thing. And, he got booed for it, but he kept pushing through. And please tell me, please tell me that somebody in this room watched the show Power. Please. Mel. Power. I, I stopped watching the last, I think Mel, I watched, stopped on, watching Mel. after two seasons. Oh, Mel. Yeah. See, I like, want to talk about Power. Wow. I, the one I stopped watching was when um, Tariq killed Raymond, and that was the last episode he was saying in the mirror. 
<laughs> and then that was it. Oh man, for those of y'all that watch Power, man, that I joint is everything. is crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah, people getting knocked off every week. They just killed my son Proctor. Oh, my P, this man was loyal, man. He was he was a lawyer. He was I'm ghost so lawyer. I'm so mad man. when I seen that. I said, hold on. And his he was on the phone with his How daughter. How you kill Proctor? Exactly. How, oh, you what? remember Proctor from when you watched yes, it, right? I do remember. Yo, Proctor was a yo. He was a. You, he was a loyal he was a lawyer, 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 but he was a bro. dirty lawyer because he wasn't supposed to be doing the things he was He's doing, doing for, for you for them. Exactly. You a whole lawyer, but he like, but you're my friend. Like he yeah. wanted to you're my friend, but this my job. But you're my friend. I'm not gonna lie. But, yo, I wanted to shed a tear for the guy, man, because he was on the phone with his daughter when he got mm, when he got shot. I remember. By the time he was on the phone with his daughter, man, I was like, damn, I'm man. I'm trying to figure out why Dre still on. Why he still? Nah, they got Dre witness protection now. Oh, they yeah. got Jane witness witness protection. Why are they saving Timmy position? <laughs> Let me stop. Not Drake. Uh, they need to be off the show. Yeah, facts. He and was supposed I, to get killed off mad long ago. He, cause the way he was moving was like, bro, like you're bound to die. But for exactly. some reason, he always stayed alive. And then I don't know what's going on with Tariq. He just was getting on my nerves. Oh, yeah, That's Tariq. funny. Oh, I just saw God. him in real life. Oh, you did? <laughs> you know, Cause I'm from Staten Island. He's from Staten Island, so he literally walked through the mall. I'm just like, just walked through the mall. Just casually. Yeah, like you just a regular, dude to, yeah, like, just a regular, regular dude, dude to me. Yeah. I've been trying to figure out how long it's gonna take him to grow up. Right, like, he's still like a baby, but I had to yeah. look it up today. I was like, yo, how old? Yo, I always wondered how old he <laughs> he's was. He's 19. Yeah, he wow. he looked 19. He's not that tall, too. He's, <laughs> he's <laughs> to average. Honest. Yeah, he average. But, like, he just didn't get yeah. no face you here. So, to me, he I'm like, baby. Younger. He looked younger. Baby. Yeah. I think he has to keep it like that because he's playing, like, what, 17 for real in the, movie, in the show? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. a fact. That's a fact. I'm like, yeah. they killing everybody. They killing everybody. I want to know, Central New Yorkers, I want to know... Um, who y'all think getting knocked off? I wanna know who who getting knocked off next. You got you got Keisha, you got Tasha. They just kill Keisha. Yeah, I think Keisha's they next. They always be killing the side chick, but yeah. she the side chick. But, but she, she the, the main, main chick now. Oh, she main. But but, but she might she might get. But killed. if she get killed, they gonna turn Tommy. Tommy yeah. ain't gonna end up right. <laughs> they better not kill Tommy right now either. No, they can't. Oh, they nah, can't cancel Tommy. power. Tommy get killed. Can't Tommy power. get killed? Power is canceled. Power. Uh, unless it's the last exact episode yeah. that happened, you can't cancel it because you watched the last like episode. I feel like if it is the last exact uh -huh. episode, Tommy will be the one to live. They're going to kill Ghost. Ghost, yeah. They I, I feel like if that. it's the last episode, Tommy going to be the last one. I'm a Tommy it. fan on the show. I'm not even going to I like Ghost too, but Tommy's just bad. Like, he's a... He, yo, bro, he don't got no chill, Tommy, bro. You get you step on Tommy's shoelaces, that's it. I feel like uh -huh. people don't cross Tommy because he's so loyal. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why he'll kill you is because you crossed that line with him. Yeah. And he makes it clear, like, this is this is how it is. Exactly. That's that. You cross this line, that's your life. Exactly. And they always cross it. Mm -hmm. And they like, yo, Tommy, no, no, no. And he like, yo, I, I told you. I honestly like, think yeah. Ghost and Tommy might die. And, mm -hmm. and, and Tariq may be the new plug. He may be, you know, on, on, on something. Because he's already selling rocks now. So like he gonna be the, the new blood. That's what I think. That's my prediction. I, I really don't think I'll watch it if like, they have I mean, a spin off. I don't watch it yeah, yeah, they have a spin. I don't know if I'm gonna watch the spin off either, but we'll see. We'll see, ladies and gentlemen. We got a couple more episodes like, what, of that. What's gonna happen? All the main characters he was rolling with is done. Like, I what's gonna you. happen? I feel he gonna get in trouble with the with the Cartiers, um, kids and stuff like that. Yep. I'm, I'm not confused. No, I don't want a whole family treat. No, leave it. the rich paul rule which is appropriate but i'ma call it something else straight up racism but instead of crying complaining and begging it's time for black people to take action you fight power with power and one of our greatest sources of power is our athletic dominance so i'm calling on all of our great black football and basketball players instead of going to these big universities that chew you up spit you out and don't care about you go to an hbcu a howard morehouse Hampton, Xavier of New Orleans, and many other schools. Ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you that HBCUs should be the next big U? Ladies and gentlemen, I got something to say. The Real Little Show. I got one more controversial topic, and I, I want to bring this to the table. I, I want to know y'all honest opinions on it. This was a topic that I brought up last week, right, about black star athletes. 
going to HBCUs. HBCUs. That's a big thing. Nowadays. That's a big thing so because a, a lot of people, band. a lot of people call it segregation or whatever and stuff like that. Me personally, I didn't call for all black athletes. There was a couple people that came out with articles saying, "Yo, black athletes, pull y'all stuff out and go." Go to your own schools. Me, I'm not liking all that because I would think that that is kind of seg that is segregation. So I said uh, because the way how y'all get mistreated on certain mm -hmm. campuses, the way how the NCAA is just robbing you, yeah. and you know the coaches is with bolts over your head and don't really care nothing about you. You generally don't feel safe on those those Kansas um, universities, yeah. campuses, and Oklahoma sometimes and stuff like that. That some of y'all with the talent should go to HBCUs this way. You have an option mm -hmm. that all right i'm a senior i can go to alabama yeah. or i can go to a delaware state if i want to with the equal chance of being able to go to the nfl or nba um mel she didn't she wasn't 100 percent feeling on that point because she you know explain Mel. i mean i feel like i wasn't on that point because it was just like i'm trying to see what happened last time it was just like i get it yeah i do feel like that but i'm like at the same time it's just like what difference is it going to make like, mm -hmm. I was just looking at the difference it was going to make. And I just don't know the difference it's going to make. What y'all think about Granted, it? Granted, you're saying, like, yeah, the NCAA is robbing them. If they go to an HBCU, yeah, the NCAA is still going to rob them. I'm all for the fact that they should get paid, period. Mm -hmm. They should, whatever, wherever they go to school at, they should get paid. They go yep. into an HBCU, they ain't going to get paid. Just like how they ain't going to get paid yep. in a PWI. Yep. Mm -hmm. They still going to get the same treatment. But in the, in the field of them playing their sport. But them being regular, regular college students on a predominantly white institution, yes, their experience might be different, but it's going to be different for any other black person that walks that campus as well. So I, I was would, just trying to find yeah, yeah. the You was trying to find the thing. Like how we talked about money and the lack of um, African-American in investments. Yeah. Why not invest in um, something that you can invest in? A lot of us, um, that a lot of black people, their only hope is, is either rap, music or sports. sports or acting entertain anything in the yeah. entertainment industry yeah. whatever so because of, of sports and of, that's like a talent that you know in general a lot of us have why not put some of the, the economic resources in those impoverished areas that some not all hbcus are in because we know delaware state is in the right neighborhood or whatever okay. but you know you, you build up your communities and then you go invest with others you know while others still go to the alabamas and stuff like that and still keep that parity but at the same time now dudes in the future have an option of generally having an option when you mm -hmm. go when you when you have when you were a senior right um, there are um, HBCU players that have made it to the NFL and the NBA, but it's not a lot. And generally, exactly. you go to the big university to exactly. get your, your opportunity. Why not be able to live in a world where you have a decision to make? I can go to a Kansas or I can go to a Delaware State. Some people only go to Kansas. They don't feel comfortable. The lights is about to turn off. So they got to go all the way over there where they generally don't feel comfortable. Why not have an option where, all right, maybe I feel comfortable I'm going to a Delaware State because, you know, I'm around people that I've been used to and I don't feel comfortable going to out, out way out in Kansas where I've never been. Yeah. Or I can decide to go there if I want to. Why not have that option? That's what I was saying. What you think about it? What both of y'all um, think about it? I think that's a tough question. I say, you know, like you said, not a lot of HBCUs sports players go into the NFL or the NBA. You know, I think, like, in order to, you know, reach, you know, the highest limit that they can, you know, they've been preparing for this. These these college students have been playing sports since they were kids. You know, they've always been preparing for this. So, of course, if they have a chance to go to Tennessee or Howard, they're going to choose Tennessee because they know a lot of, you know, they have a lot of opportunities if they go to Tennessee. Exactly. So, I mean, they're, they're, they care about how they're treated, but at the end of the day, they only have to make a sacrifice, that sacrifice for four years, and then they're off to the NFL or the NBA. You know what I mean? I feel like there's also like that stigma, like that you know, not of a lot of HBCUs have good players, and that's because you know a lot of not a lot of good players go to HBCUs. So that's just a cycle that's gonna keep happening over and over again. So that's how I feel about it. I don't know, Craig. What Yo, you Craig, what you feel about it? I man? feel like I don't really have enough knowledge on the topic, to really, for my opinion out there. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. There's a, 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 a lot of things going on with the NCAA, and as young teenage teenagers, those are hard sacrifices and decisions that they have to make and stuff exactly. like that. I just felt like it was an interesting topic mm -hmm. to really. It is, and it's becoming bigger. It's becoming a bigger topic that 
uh, is getting a lot of news attention. A lot of, and I think it would be great if you know black, you know, athletes would go to black schools, but at the same time, they're not gonna end up in the NBA or you know NFL. You know, they don't have that much of opportunity if they go to a PWI. So, you know what I mean? I'm sorry. Go ahead. What division is like half some of these HBCUs? Like that's the. They're big D1. They low, like, they, no, like, they, uh, some of them. Some of them are like lower divisions. A lot okay. of them like like mm. the other state I know is Division Three, or whatever. Oh, and they yes. all they all <laughs> players that did make it to the NFL and NBA in um those schools, but it's generally it's not. Mm. And you know I feel like because you know we 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 could be able to put an investment in somewhere. I believe that our talent investments. Can help us financially and help employ people in those universities because now you think about it not only is it is helping the sports side of things but it's helping the college it's yeah. helping the neighborhood That's true. think about Cortland, the neighborhood how it feeds into the school it's helping that surrounding area and helping other people get more jobs so i feel like it's you know i mean it could be very beneficial i'm not saying mm -hmm. like no they shouldn't go at all mm -hmm. i'm just like okay we have to look at certain things like we're bringing up certain points but Take it from the person that's actually playing ball. Most of them come from low poverty areas. Exactly. Most of them be talking like, yeah, I'm at school working blood, sweat, and tears. My coach is getting paid millions of dollars. My life is about to get cut off at home. Facts. And I'm yeah. here. So their mindset is not like, okay, I'm going to take this risk. In their mind, I don't have no room for risk right now. Yeah, I need to do what I got to do yeah. because I can't see my mama struggling the way yeah. she's struggling. And I'm sitting Absolutely. here in my college room eating ramen noodles. My life's about to get cut off. Exactly. I may or may not have a home to go back to during break. Like Their mindset is not about building nobody community, Same. which it should be because I feel like that should be everybody, you know, put it economically back into your community. I feel like that should I mean, be everybody's I feel like mindset. all races do so except for us. The Jews do it with the Jews. That's yeah. true. The whites right. do it with the You're whites. Right. And when they do, when they get to a financially stable place, that's when they interconnect the races. You know what I'm saying? When they all economically up there, then they can be like, all right, I'm the Chinese invest with the whites and stuff like that. We black people, we just, you know, we don't invest in our own, I feel like. It's also not part of our culture, I would it's say. Not. It it's really not. It really isn't. It hasn't been part of our culture since, what, the 60s? Like, you know what it's I mean? When there was, We didn't really have a choice but to invest into black. I mean, slavery you know, has something to do with that as well. No, no, but, me? but that's what I'm saying. 60s, we only we had, had to invest in, yeah. in our community. Yeah, of course, because there was slavery. Slavery happened and then, you know... We had to build, you know, everything was segregated. Jim Crow was around that time. So, of course, yeah. like, we I mean, had to. that's the civil rights movement you feel me? and that's stuff a, like yeah, that. Yeah, but like I was saying, it's not really part of a culture. Like, Jews only invest in Jewish neighborhoods because they grew up that way. They're assimilated to that way. They've been like that for years. Black people don't really invest in us because we've always wanted to, you know, put on this facade, like... Yeah, we have to have money. Like, we invest into Louis Vuitton and Chanel, and all, knowing that we don't have the money to invest in these companies, but we do anyway, and that's always building up the white wealth. You know, we don't really invest into black businesses because it's not really part of our nature. We don't really do it. You know what I mean? And it's just, like, same thing with going to PWIs. Like, a lot of black athletes feel like if they go to, you know, a HBCU, they're not going to get anywhere. I you know what I mean? Basically, where I'm coming from is if you, and trust me, y'all know how my non, my analogies work. You either like my analogies or you hate it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got something to say. You feel me? It's like that movie Saw, um, the original Saw, when um, there was the two guys that was locked that was locked in in the chamber the or whatever, leg. and the okay. guy with the leg, and he cut his leg off to, to be able to go and get help, mm -hmm. right? That's where I'm coming from in a funny way is... I, we black people, I feel like we should invest in our communities, Absolutely. especially in other ways, not just sports, but in yeah. other ways that we can. Definitely. Obviously, exactly. our athletic dominance that we have can allow us to do so in sports. So we can do that and then come back mm. and help other people and make connections with other races as well. Because we cannot um, co um, connect with other people because we're so financially down. So we can't make those investments and we yeah. other people. So why not invest in ourselves like every other race do? And then exactly. when we get to the top, we all can invest and make investments right? with others. So and we can definitely invest. invest in ourselves, especially in sports. But this is one this is one proposition I would want to make. If if we do make this decision, which I'm I'm like, okay, we can make the decision. I would want these top 
MBA companies to come look at these HBCUs because I don't think they take the chance to even come look at them. They yeah, need to go. Sure. They need to come and bring them there because the only way that D three is gonna move to three to D one is D1, because yeah. of the players. So these players is working their booties off. And doing their blood, sweat, and tears on the, you know, putting all their hard work on the court. I would want the same energy from these NBA companies and teams to come look at. That's a nice word, Mel. But at the same time, they don't have to. (laughs) Oh my god! At the same time, they don't have to because you know these gifted sports players go to PWIs. So if all those gifted sports players would go to HBCUs, then they would actually have to actually go to HBCUs and watch yeah. the games. The thing about it is, it would be like, for them, it would be like, I don't want a broken promise. Granted, not every NBA player goes into the league. It's only about 1% out of all of them. And yeah, that's like white, stats white, and stuff. White, yeah. It's not a lot. But I would want, I was like, if that happens, yes. The reason why schools be, schools will be taken from D three to D one is because of the players. That's honestly all that. That's true. But then we would need some of these NBA, like I said, companies to put in just as much work as they are. Come mm-hmm. look at them. Come see what exactly. they're about. You, yeah. they didn't want to go there, and they're going to be like, "Well, that wasn't my choice." But you should come still check them out because at the end of the day, a player is a player, regardless of where they come from. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I feel you, and I feel you on that. Cause but, we over um, here like just go, just go, but then in their mind like who gonna be checking for me? Exactly. exactly. So they exactly. need to come check. I I feel like if that bottom happens, line is it's hard being African American. Yeah. <laughs> bottom line, <laughs> you know, it's it's hard being it. But guess what, man? Everybody got their struggles. White, black, exactly. Chinese, oh, yeah. Guyanese, you know, Bentonese. I don't know. I'm just I'm just going off now. I'm trying to rhyme. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I feel you. I feel you, but we we know we also got stuff going on in Cortland as well. We have um homecoming weekend, right? It's homecoming yes, weekend. Yes, it's homecoming weekend. I mean, being a part of BSU, right what yeah, do you got? We we gotta think about that. Like I, like like I feel like our homecoming is just mm. garbage. But I'm rooting for Cortland. And yeah, I'm excited. I wonder I'm how many people go, but we we pop out for somebody's we pop out for somebody's football game. Yeah. Me and you went to a basketball game. Remember we seen the boys and then we turned around and sat for the girls. Yeah. Me and Bria did that like our freshman year, and it exactly. was like people. It was mad people for the. That's another topic for another day. It was mad people for the boys as soon as the girls started but playing. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. That's, that's another, another topic. That's, a, that's, that's another, another topic day. that we get into one one of these days. But you know what, me and supporting Bria women in sports. Yep. You feel me? That's why I think Serena Williams is so impactful. But that, you know, I could go on that another show. Why do they party tonight? Aren't they playing tomorrow? <laughs> they don't make any sense. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sacrifices. Yeah. It's a weekend. Me? Friday night. Yeah, Saturday, Friday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. Well, I just hit that note. Y'all heard that note? Friday night. Hey, listen, we're going to see what happens. Who else is going to the game? All right, I'm going to just go. Let me show support. Yeah. Just I'm see. just going. I know my roommates are going, so just to support. I missed last year's homecoming, so I'm trying yeah, to be there this so year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, the baby wrapped up. You know, he had an album that came out as well. Uh, um, positive so reviews on that joint. It's fire. It was fire. fire. I thought. It's a good. It's, it's a. Good. It's a good album, and that's one album I listen to from front to back. And right. did I skip a song? No, I didn't start from intro because I heard intro already. So I started from the second song on intro. Yeah. Um. So I listened from that one all the way through, and I was. Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Me, no, if I gotta skip a song or two, it's not that good. And it's only like <clears throat> a couple of albums that I listen to where I like listen to like full through without mm-hmm. skipping. Like, yeah. there's one artist, I am Sue. He's like so underrated, but it was one album like I love. Like, I listen to that album front to back. Yo, yeah. Craig, what you thought about the album? The baby. Yeah. I enjoyed it. You know, I think New Orleans is making noise for the first time since Cash Money. Cash Money isn't making too much noise anymore. But um, do you see what he said? He said this is gonna be the biggest album since the Carter Three. Yeah, yeah. I'm I don't know that. about that, but I mean like, it's marketing. It good. It's I, marketing. Of course, that, that's how people market. That's how people Just market facts. Things, yeah, exactly. I enjoyed it, man. I like the joint uh, that London on the track produced. Uh, there he go. Yeah. That slaps. Listen to that on the way you. here. <laughs> yeah, man. That album yeah, definitely no. suggest. No, definitely it is a good yeah. album, and he's a great person when it comes to marketing like he's 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 smart and i appreciate all his videos that he makes because he tells a story with it it might not go with the song but i love his videos because it's a mini movie and i'm like this is what we need to bring back creativity like where is that he's not mumbling but he's just 
He's got his own flow. People don't. don't nah, know yeah, if you listen to intro, he flow. spoke a lot of stuff. A lot about his and father. And I was like, too. yo, I didn't even know that his father, father passed, passed away. away. This same year. time, Nipsey passed away too. Like, yeah, and his, and his daughter his, was just like his dad. <laughs> I was like, oh. And his uh, song hit number one on that same day, so he couldn't even enjoy it. Like, he couldn't enjoy what his song. Hit number one? I didn't hear that. Hit was it show? I don't know what song, show. but he said in the song, like, my song hit number one, and my dad died the same. Day. Like, I mean, that's like, that's crazy. Like, that's you can't crazy. even enjoy that's it. Like, you can't even enjoy it. We didn't even know. Yeah. We didn't even know what this man was going through. Imagine. He was making an album. He lost his daddy. The whole world lost Nip. Yeah. That's how the world It was so much going on with like with him, and none of us knew because he still makes sure that he makes us happy. That's the world. That's how the world operates. So you get the good and the bad news. You know that's how it is. Uh, but we have also Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad City um, that surpasses um, the Eminem show for the longest running hip hop album in Billboard history. Ooh, really? Yeah. Man. Yo, That's Craig, sweet. talk to me. Does this does this record right here, what does this record, what does this stack do for Kendrick Lamar on a bigger scale? Does that put general? him? Where does that put him? Like, what does it do for Kendrick Lamar? As I far as like conversations, you know what I'm thinking. Conversations as you know, lists. The when goat. it comes to lists, like, when it comes to the goat. like what? It, See, like even before this stat, I would have put Kendrick over Eminem. Yeah, Kendrick me too. Historically talks me too. About more political, serious things, and Eminem's. I don't know. Eminem, he he dabbles in that, but like he's kind of like he, he he likes to talk crazy, you know? Yeah, he I can't the relate to like, that. I can't relate to how the he stuff you talk about, but he's an yeah. excellent lyricist. He's I'll give you that. Lyricist, you know, like, the, ev- excellent lyricist. I don't know. I, and rap battles, he's up there as yeah. well. Before so. this, I would have put Kendrick above Eminem. I just like Kendrick better than I like Eminem. But this is huge, man. That's that's crazy, and it's it's a good thing for you know this era of hip hop because that's our era, you know. Was this um Kendrick Lamar's best album? Out of How the Pimp a Butterfly, Damn. Um, you already know he did the little Black Panther thing as well. Like, yeah. is this Kendrick yeah, Lamar's best album? I feel like. Yeah. I don't know, man. This had a lot of classics on it for sure. I like Damn a lot. You like Damn? I, like I thought Damn, Damn was underrated a little bit under Me the rug. Too. It's, it it's, but the thing about Damn, it doesn't have a lot of playback. Like how um, Good Kid, Mad City did, or even how the Prima Butterfly did. Yeah. Like Damn, it doesn't really have that much playback. That's my song, bro. That's like an ultimate classic. <laughs> Wait, was it Damn that got the Pulitzer Award? Or was yeah, Damn did Butterfly? get the Pulitzer Award. See, that, yeah. That Honestly, is. he, yo. Damn had me like, damn. I went to <laughs> his concert. Yo. Shout out to my friend, because oh, he went for free. You know that was good. Yo. Yo. Shout out to my friend, because we went for free. <laughs> um, But... Honestly, I always tell people like when I experience a concert and I really enjoy it, I always be like, if you have the chance to like experience that concert, like with Kendrick, he put on an amazing show. And I would say, if you can, if you have the money to go see him in concert, please do so. Do so. I feel like concerts are so amazing because you get to see their artwork becomes a story right in front of your yeah. face. And I love that about concerts because sometimes I don't like the whole concerts. You hold the mic and you do this. No, he had the the little like, people in karate and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and they was dancing but doing like jujitsu and stuff at the same. It was dope. I was like, he put a whole storyline together, and I feel like if you can, please go to a concert because that's J Cole. Like J Cole, I went to I went to see 2014 Forest Hill Drive. He was like acting like he was tour? sitting on the roof. Oh my god. I'm and jealous. then like I'm I jealous. seen him before your eyes and he came out with shackles on with a whole oh, jail shoot. suit. Yeah. Yo, I kid you not. Go to these concerts because honestly they give you the opportunity to see their artwork unfold in front of your eyes because some of them be like, I ain't gonna perform the whole album. But J. Cole always performs the whole album. And so with Kendrick, like he performed the whole album and it'd be like from front of the album to the back. So you get to see how like their every song is a little story. And he they they somehow piece it together. And I'm like sometimes you listen to it, it's like, yeah, it's a cool song, yeah, it's a good bop, the beat is fire, the lyrics are good, but you like, dang, that's a that's a story. Facts. I kid you not. If you can, I would say if you can experience J Cole and Kendrick in concert. I mean, we saw J Cole um during the All Star game. I thought he was only supposed to perform two songs. That brother had a whole concert at the All Star game. Yeah. 
I was like, oh my god. You, you gotta take it. And he said he's not doing no more features as well. He came out with that, that news a couple weeks ago. I don't know. That, he he that, that he's he done with the features. That. Yeah. He's not gonna be on any features, or he's not gonna get nobody to feature on. I don't that. think he's doing any more he features. Must. Damn. He just dropped the Dreamville tape. That was all features. Yeah. Well, I don't think. Yeah. I just yeah. I'm gonna say that's, that doesn't even count. But yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's crazy. That album. No. I could talk. It wasn't his, but it was like. It wasn't it was people, his people was not nah, people wasn't even on Dreamville, but once Wap Dad touched something, I'm here for it. <laughs> when I heard Wap Dad was on the album, I was like, yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> Yo. So, oh, you good. But <laughs> honestly, like, I feel like I always stress it. If you can experience a concert like live, please do. Like they paint out stories. Like Tyler created, he was good. ASAP Rocky, he was he was, uh, he was good. Yeah, I, I got like ASAP. I got like play ASAP. ASAP, like ASAP. But like those concerts was a different. Like all those concerts for me was a different vibe. Like Drake was a different vibe. Then like Tyler, I'm like mosh pitting. What are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was me. I was like, uh, no. But then like. You know, I really stress. If you could see J. Cole and Kendrick, please do. I wish. I it really wish. says a lot about the artists, too. Please do. Because a lot of artists, a lot of rappers especially, will just get up on stage and let the, the you know, like the track run in the background. They're not even really singing it. They're just yelling a few words yeah. here and there and jamming. And, if an, you know, if an artist is really putting out a good show and singing all their songs and, you know, not putting not on a really show, good show. Good story. Bro. Good story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what really nice. separates the real. Mm -hmm. Like, that's I don't want to see no little baby mama on the mic walking across the stage like this with two backup exactly. dancers popping it. No. Exactly. I want to see some real dancing. I don't want to see no twerking. I want to see some real dancing. I want to see that you disappear from the stage and your dancers is putting on a story for me. And that's what I got from Kendrick. He had these dancers painting out a story, and it was just beautiful. When did you see him? Like, two years ago. When was the album the Damn. tour? No, it was the Damn tour. That wasn't the one with like everyone in TDE, like Schoolboy was on it. No, this was it was just like his tour, and then it was just like Travis and somebody. What was his name? Big Baby Dram, Little Baby Dram. Dram. Yeah, Dram. him Dram. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. they were just headliners, but honestly, I Travis see, yeah. he he outdid himself with the Big Bird. I was like, ooh, <laughs> wait, this concert's a lot for me. And then like Kendrick was on the stage, then like in the middle he just pops up. I'm like, wait, wait, this is a lot, but it was a good story. I feel you on that. Yo, Craig, story. we know we you out here. You make um beats and stuff like that. You want to give us a closing beat? To walk out the show, or you <laughs> gonna wait like a closing beat, for, like one of the beats you produce or something uh, like that. I mean, I could pull something up. All right, man. Let's, let's get let's get a beat. Let's end the really show off, man. Right let's get Craig, man. Put meanwhile, me on, on the meanwhile, while he search up, man. Anything, anything else going on in hip hop that we could discuss for like four minutes, three minutes? But we get that beat. I think we hit it. Like I think baby, we had we had a lot of topics. Yeah, really no, we did. We had a lot of like topics. Well, the one thing about me, I had a lot of topics on my radio show. Yeah. They be like, how the hell you come up with something to talk about every week when you done ran through forty topics on one show? I be like, listen, man, I got something to say. I got something to say. Y'all know how I am, man. This the real deal. When everybody in here, you feel me, Craig, Mel. Bria, we we all in here. That hey, was man, a good show. Thank you for bringing me out today, Lil. For real. Yo, no yeah, problem, thank you bro. So this is my much. first time on the radio, and yeah. I was a little nervous at first, but I had a good a good time. I had a great time. I'm glad to be here with everyone. Like, so you know, fact. I'm looking forward That's to the concert with this. Honestly, sometimes like great. being in a booth really beats being at a party. Like, yeah. it's just like sometimes you just oh, need yeah. good conversation. Like, that's all you I'll need. take this any day of the week over a party. Just exactly. Conversation. Nobody does this week, anymore. Exactly. Honestly, bro, that's the thing about 2019. That's why I live here in the booth. You feel me? If I could have made my bed in here, I made my bed in here, bro. This is this, my home joint right here. He hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, I got the I got the boot to eat. You feel me? I got the mics. You feel me? <laughs> I know that down came off right, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I got something to say. That's how it is. When you got to be ready, Craig. What am I gonna just pull this down? Nah, I got you, I got you. We gonna put your beat right oh, here. Yeah? We gonna, we gonna put it on the center. Central yeah. New York about to hear some fire. You know Tell the devil he a liar. Old coach. Uh -huh. We out here. Coach, look it up on SoundCloud. That's your name? Yeah. Say it again coach. for the people. Old coach. That's the old Shout coach. Shout out to Instagram. Coach at Craig Mahar, C R A I G M A H A R. But. Yeah, man. You got, a, you, got a out, you got an outlet? Yeah, yeah, right there. On the, on the side, side, on that side. I'm right, going to have to push this down. It's going to be a little jazzy joint. Okay. Right, okay. Jazzy lo-fi joint. Little jazzy. All right, yo, okay. you, you going to play? You ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cut the mix 
slow it down for the people. That's a fact. Let's turn this joint up. Not too well. playing by low while we on the mic and then sing about it. That's what I'm gonna do. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that's my son Craig over here, man, with the beat, man, that jazzy feel. I told him while we was off the mic said that a uh, tribe called Quest could have rapped to that joint. You feel me? Easy. That's I was what, inspired by Tribe Called Quest. They brought wow. that to the to the forefront. That's a jazzy rap beat. And I like they're it. The, they're the purpose of that. So I like it. What a perfect way to end episode 31 of the Real Little Show. I want to thank all everybody that came out to the show today. Um, Bria, Craig, Mel. You know, any last words before we um, hop off the air? Make sure you go follow WYGL on Instagram at WYGL underscore podcast. Make sure you go subscribe to real little tv on youtube to catch this particular video i mean well this particular interview slash podcast slash radio show on youtube so and all the shows that, that you miss you already know i got in the huddle and the real little show as well we got more episodes like this that's going to be coming up in the weeks to come ladies and gentlemen your boy about to sign out your Bree, anything you want to say no, just have a good night, everybody. Um, follow Cortland BSU. Also follow me on the gram, um, Mrs. MRS dot SK five. Good night, everybody. Hey, hey man, shout out Real Lil, shout out YGL, shout out BSU, man. Social propaganda album coming soon. Follow me on the gram, old coach Craig Mahar. Man, thank you, Real Lil, for bringing me on here and the opportunity. I'm just, I'm just blessed to be here. No problem, y'all. And with that being said, this is your boy Real Lil, and I'm about to sign out, man. But you know what? I got something to say. I'm signing out. <laughs> I'm out. One love. <laughs>